30 seconds starts now. We are live on video and audio. I'm waiting for the ad to run before we start the show. Does somebody want to say it? Do you want to say it, Gary, or do you want Norm to say it? What's that? Should you say it or should Norm say it? Say what? The, you know, the I thing. said it last time. I said it last time. I don't care. I'll say it. Now is a good I'll time say to it. Time. Go now. Hey, let's start the show. It's December 8th, 2011. Welcome to This Is Only a Test, the official podcast of Tested.com. <laughs> I'm Will Smith. It is a full t-shirt house today at the Tested Podcast. Norman Chan, you're wearing a fetching uh, shirt with the likeness of you and me on it. I went with all black today. I did that yesterday. I, went, I have black shoes, jeans, shirt, and wristband. Black be black. Yeah, and hair. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, you always have black hair. R- most true. of the time. I cannot get any other color hair, unfortunately. Really? You couldn't go well, like red or nope. orange or something nope. like that? Uh, you know, this is a problem. You guys, yeah, dudes like you, yeah. If you had dark hair, you could get different colored hair, and it might look cool. Really, if you were younger, I don't think so. When you were younger, maybe like you like fluorescent green or something like that. Not no no like oh like may, a natural maybe like a like a like more natural brown. I don't know something maybe maybe like a dirty blonde or Ga- something. Gary Witta, who's sitting here, didn't you have a Guy Fieri phase for a while with kind of a bleach thing? Or was it that... It was, it was an ill... It was oh, a, I remember it, that! It was a oh my god! Hopelessly, wow! Uh, I'm mis- gonna find photos. attempt to look like Simon Pegg. Really? Oh, man, yeah. that was early Simon Pegg, too. Yeah, during the spaced... Oh, yes. you're, yeah. you're reminding me of... Okay, I, I do. Yeah. I definitely know where photos I, ble- I bleached my hair and I yes. grew a goatee and it did not... Did not <laughs> I can't work. imagine that was a good look for you. It did not work. It's evil Gary. You know, for a while, the bleached hair thing was kind of a thing at Future. I know I know it happened at GameSpot, too, because Jeff had it and... Joe and Mitch had it. The, Joe Mitch had it yeah. and, and, and Mark Medeo did it for a while. Yeah, dudes totally got... See, and then... But going back, dudes like me, if I get any different color hair... Then I look something like I don't want to look. Why? Well, for example, I don't understand. Like, when, you, when you say dudes like you, what do you mean? Racism. Oh, uh, norms. There's yeah. racial things here that we don't understand because you know we're the man. Gary, how you doing? I'm all right. You're wearing an orange ass orange. I think that's a NeoGaf shirt. It is. It's a nice looking shirt. I like it. I approve. How did you recognize that that was actually a NeoGaf shirt, or did you read that from the chat? I read that from the chat. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Oh, there's yeah. a, the I, chat's I totally already pointing it out. Okay. I, the chat was like, "Oh, night." Well, hey, hey Gaf the guys, I'd like to get approved. My username is just oh, quit Norma that Chan. shit. It, you know, if you buy a shirt, I think you get instant approval. R- no, I'd pay know. twenty bucks for instant approval. That would be. Uh, I do that all the time. Some Come on, like spend very, money for very approval. Very long time. Yeah. You have a oh. cockerel on your t-shirt. I have a cock on my shirt. See, I I wasn't gonna do the obvious. Or yeah. What's a cockerel? A cockerel. Co- What's a cockerel? Oh, is that the name for a male chicken? Yes. I did not know that. I thought you were just making a weird mandra green. Oh, so you actually thought words. cock was like the full name of it? I just that's what we in America that's what we call male chickens is cocks. Right. Rooster. It's short for cock. Rooster is another appropriate word. Yeah. You know, which is why Rooster Cogburn I thought was a funny name for a character and a movie. Because it's like What's they the were name for a movie. Yeah, there yeah, was a movie did, Rooster Cogburn, an sequel, ill-advised sequel. Another really? Cogburn, well, not yeah. not the Jeff Bridges. The one. I know, I know, the, I know. The real one, the Academy Award yeah, one, because it was a popular one. movie, so they decided oh, to keep wow. the character going. The, the that Rooster was the beginning you, of that sequel stuff. That was real early on, when because prior to that, like nobody ever said, "Hey, 60s? here's Casablanca, let's make a sequel." Uh, uh, that's correct. True, True Grit was like late '60s, early '70s. So, your rooster is kind of like. What is it? What is that called? The front of the rooster, the part that's the the breast. Like it's kind of presenting itself. He's he's he's, he's wings back, chest he's out. Strutting. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a happy rooster. He's okay. got a lot to live for. But there's, so there's no there's nothing I- ironic or hip. The, the, I got this the, from Fab. Okay. That's uh, that's it's his, not like that's a list thing where it's trying to make some kind of visual no. gag or something. I just okay. thought it was a cool design. I thought it's it was a, a nicely drawn cock. Yeah, I like it as well because the emblem of my uh, football uh, team that I support oh. is also a cock. Right? Arsenal. No. Tottenham. <laughs> Tottenham Hotspur, that's great. Yeah, there you go. Uh, are they called the Hotspurs because the spur on the back of the chicken's leg is the sp- is, is 
what they're named after? Is that no, the mascot? No, I don't believe so. The origin of that name goes back to like the 1880s. It's cold today. To look it, it is. It it's is cold outside. It is cold. It's cold outside. It's hot in here, as is normally the case. It's about 80 degrees. Let's uh, let's let's. There's not a whole lot of news this week. We're so. Uh, full disclosure, we are recording on Tuesday because Norm is going to something secret that he can't talk about, and I'm going on a short vacation on Thursday and Friday, so we would normally record on Thursday. We won't be here. Wait, where are you going? Uh, Gene and I are going up north. for uh, We rented a house up on the coast, and we're just going to kind of chill out and... Uh, go to maybe go to stuff that we've because we've never we've explored down south a lot. We've gone to like Carmel and uh, Santa Cruz and all that stuff a bunch, but we never really gone. I, mean, I think we've stayed in the Russian River a couple of times, but we never gone to like Mendocino or any of that stuff. Uh, so up we north. Uh, it's up north, yeah. So it's up past Stinson Beach, up on the coast, and uh, and we found a really good deal on a house that has like right on the ocean. It's on stilts in the water. Oh, yeah. Dangerous. So so well, I mean, you know. What's the worst that can happen? A little, little getaway? Yeah, we're, we're down the street from some place that you can get uh, barbecued oysters that we've been to before. I'm a big I like fan of that. Oysters. Yeah. We can go to Point Reyes, uh, get some blue cheese, I assume, is what you do at Point Reyes. I've never been there before they either. They do have fanta- – Point Reyes blue cheese is fantastic. It's the best kind. Well, you can, get that, you can get that at Whole Foods. Well, yes, but – But I want to go straight to the you source. You're not doing right, hiking, yeah. though. Maybe. Well, probably not with her. I mean, we might go on, like, short walks. She, her it's very – I've been up there. It's very um, – Kind of Na- chill. It's very naturey. Granola. Yeah. Like it, yeah be, well, it's be, one of the be, four big mountains you can climb around the Bay Area. There's lots of trails Diablo, and nature Mount walks. Tan. And, Mount uh, Tampa, Diablo, and Point Reyes. Very blustery yeah. and okay. windy up there and cold. Yeah. So be, be prepared to like really get back we're, to nature. We're bundled up. That we'll probably be like, when can we go home? I'm taking my big jacket. Yeah. Well, the place we're staying is pretty posh, so... It has it has like a fully like normally we go and we either eat we either plan vacations around where we're going to eat or we go someplace that has a really nice kitchen and plan to make a bunch of food that we would normally not make at home. So this is a this is probably a making food that, that we wouldn't normally make at home. Uh, plus the barbecued oysters, which I, I had never had. Like that was something I think it's a Northern California thing because I'd never had it anywhere. No, else. No, they're good. I actually am not a big fan of oysters, but when with when you smother them in the barbecue sauce oh, and all yeah. that, and you, all so the, you don't like the raw good. oysters. No, do. I don't like the way they kind of like slither down your throat. I feel like I'm getting well, no, face hugged or something. Put a you put a you, lemon, yeah, a little uh, little vinegar and stuff there. I love all kinds of seafood, but oysters I'm kind of picky. Kind of slimy. About. I love I, mussels. Oh, I love mussels. So, but cook barbecue. Yeah, barbecue yeah, oysters are the cooked, best. Cooked. They are, they're very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We well, we made so we made mussels with the with the French fries when I busted out the yeah. fryer a few weeks ago. We made I the mussels that. with the French fries. It looks fantastic. That was a lovely experience. And you know, I had no idea, but mussels, at least here, mussels are really cheap. Mm. Like, mussels are like five bucks a pound. In pasta, it's really good. Yeah, it, well, or chipino or any of you know that. You know sounds so. really good? It's like a big plate of really good mussels with, like, garlic mm, and, like, Belgian-style yes. French fries. That's what we made. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Well, mm. we'll, we'll you, next time you guys come over, we'll have to it's bust out the as fryer a, As again. a European, I'm one of those people that endorses mayo on French fries in the way that most Americans well, I'm okay with that. Mayo? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the European way. On, like, Instead of ketchup. Straight up mayo, or is it like an aioli? Well, you could do. Well, an no, aioli. like if you go to say like Fritz here in San Francisco, where they do, where the yeah. Belgian French fry place, they will offer you various kinds of gourmet mayos to dip your fries into. I don't know if I like. That. Oh, Have you been fantastic. to that place in Hayes Valley, the French bistro place that has the 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 mussels and frites? I probably have. It's real good. Yeah. It's Valley. Yeah. So it's adult hipster. It mussels is adult hipster. Mussels it's and frites hipsters with strollers. Great, is a great meal. Yeah. Yeah. I love well, it. and the nice thing is, it's right down the street from the containers where they have the liquid nitrogen ice cream place called Smitten, and yeah. then there's a ritual on the other side of that. So you can go have the mussels and frites, mm-hmm. walk down the street after that, get you a liquid nitrogen like, ice yeah. cream, Is and the then cart? finish it off with a coffee. It's, a, it's in a container. The, it's, it's in like a shipping but container. But it's in that little like open par- like parking lot It used area. to be like a slum. Right. It's ca- or some playground. Lot. Now it's like, yeah. I see, yeah, yeah. Speaking yeah. of uh, French fries, even though it's not something I really eat anymore, I was keen to uh, sample the new uh, Burger King fries. Oh. Did you because, like them? You know, been, Already stuff you've they, adjusted. Since they, since they redid them back in the 90s. Mm-hmm. They, they, I they think made, that was the 2000s. But yeah. Well, whenever it was, they were, they, they were shit. They made a big deal. Yeah, yeah and they, they made, made them terrible. New they, fries, they, they, new they had a big launch day. We could go get a bag of fries for free because they yep. wanted people to try them, but they were awful. It's, I stopped going to Burger King after that point because the fries were so, so bad. Yeah. So they just finally reinvented them again. And they're better. You but know, not as good as Arby's. Well, no, so, no, or not well, Arby's, I'm sorry, uh, like Wendy's. McDonald's, Wendy's, Arby's, all those fries, I think, are, are all pretty good. Burger King was, like, way back here. Now, yeah. you know, they were way, way worse. Now they're just slightly inferior. So but, they're, that, but they're acceptable. Does that change your fast... Okay, so it doesn't change your fast food meal. I, I For a while, when Burger King was making the little the little mini hamburgers, the fourth, fourzies... Mm. You mean the, the shots, like the burger mi- shots or something? They were called yeah. BK minis, I believe. Yeah. 
I was on the Burger King train again. Yeah, I just the slide has become a trend oh, in fast food lately. I love the I, well <sighs> because White Castle. Well, White been doing Castle, this all yeah, along. exactly. Well, so White Castle, are like what the fuck? Yeah. White Castle. Well, White Castle's onions. What's their own fault? They should open some like, locations out here. Yeah, they should. Well, White. What we see Frozen in, in, White in the South? The same. In the South, we have Crystal, which is like White Castle but Crystal? better. Crystal. Okay. No, not Crystal. That's different. Mm. Uh, it's a little upscale for for Southern fast yeah. food. But yeah, the crystal with the you get the you get those little burgers, and they also sell chili there. So you dunk the burger in the chili. Mm. That's a magical experience. It has a little pickle on there that's kind of warm. And they steam the whole thing, so they get a little soggy yeah. and delicious. Yeah. Should we talk about tech news? The Burger I King want to talk fries. More about food. The Burger King fries were so bad that were, I would try to avoid eating there. But like, if I couldn't avoid it, I would just I would always stub out the onion rings, and even they're not very good. Yeah. The Burger onion King, rings. I think Burger King is is the worst of all the f- major fast food places. No, the burgers aren't no, even no. that good. I like the, the Whopper. chicken sandwich is good. Eh, no. I like the Whopper better than the new Wendy's burgers. The long one? The the international chicken chicken sandwiches? Get the Italian one or the the French one? No, I don't really like anything on the Burger King menu. Thumbs down. There's nothing special. The burger, uh, chi- uh, chicken fries is the thing that they have special. Chicken fries and the concept cool. of chicken fries is vile. It's so American, isn't it? It's really <laughs> gross. You know McDonald's will not do a hot dog? Really? They'll, they'll try everything, but they will never have a hot dog. Why not? The guy who bought McDonald's and r- r- turned into a big, you know, international, multi-billion dollar company said, you just don't know what's in a hot dog. It th- you'll never be able to, you know... We'll never meet their standards, food standards. Well, so I've never I, I had dogs. some organic hot dogs for dinner last night, and they were fantastic. Organic hot dogs? Oh, yeah, Applegate. Applegate Farms. They make good wait, stuff. Wait, wait. Is a hot dog or like a sausage? Like, well, I mean, it wasn't in a bun, but it was the, it was a hot dog sausage. I think those are different. Though. A pig in a blanket? No, it was, no, no a, it, it was a hot dog wiener. If you put it in a bun, oh. you would call it a hot dog. I just I didn't eat the bun. Yeah, I do that all the time. But yeah. it, is it like proper, like the... Like hot dog meat, yes, with okay, the beef. skin okay, and every, okay. the way that you not make, not a sausage though, well, not, like a, like, like, not a fancy sausage. Well, no, but it was a hot dog. It's even a like hot a dog brat on the front, you still call a brat a hot dog. But when, when you go as to like Costco, they are ideal sausages. Hot. As soon okay. as you put any kind of sausage in a bun, it becomes a hot dog. But some, which I maintain, some kinds is a of sandwich. Are hot dogs no matter what you do. Hot dogs are definitely sandwiches. I feel like um, like if you buy a packet of ballparks, yeah, without having to put them in a bun, you, a would, you would not call that a sausage. That's a hot dog. Yeah, right. Well, the but if you put a, a sausage hot... in a bun, it's a hot dog. Yes. The difference okay. between as soon a hot as you do- put a sausage in a bun, it becomes a hot. The dog. difference between a hot dog and a sausage has to do with the casing and the kind yeah. of general consistency of the innards. You just consistency. You just, you just know sure. it when you see it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like pornography. Yeah. The hot dog guy Thanks, down Edmies. by uh, Union Square here in San Francisco. Oh, on the corner by the Levi's store. Here's here are my two. Well, here's one rule um wait, wait. i personally think that the that the hot dog it, each each end of the sausage yes. should protrude beyond the bun should be blown out yeah. oh well oh. but the, depends on the, girth the, the of sausage the... should be longer than the bun for one yes. thing is this but, a metaphor and also the other thing that they do there and you don't see this very often you see it a lot in new york on the east coast you don't see it so mm-hmm. much here is they have this red onion Oh, I love the red onion that they slider, put on yeah. it. Oh, it's fantastic. That's what, yeah. that's what and this is the two like outside, a red onion in Union Square, right? There's, there's two one, cars. There's one, well, there's one by Union Square. There's one down by the Apple Store. The one by the Apple Store is not as good. That's where I usually go. Oh, uh, you're. Huh. The thing is, that guy sometimes has churros. So I'll go there oh. for a churro because you know how right. I feel about churros. Of course. But uh, get the New York style dog because that's yeah. what you want. The long or the thin Polish. One. I had a. Um, I, I think oftentimes that East Coast stuff gets overblown. I was in New York one time and I went to Times Square and said, I'm going to get a New York hot dog and see what it's all about. Yeah. This is going to be overhyped. It was fantastic. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like the, the first time I had a New York hot dog, it was the Homer Simpson experience. It was in World Trade Plaza. It was yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. And Clam juice. <laughs> huh? Clam juice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cucklash. Crab, Cucklash. Crab juice. Cucklash. Crab juice. So, so. <laughs> I always <laughs> like it when the guy goes, we have Monday to. Oh, clam juice. He goes, oh, I'll have the clam I'll, juice. I'll have the clam juice. Um, it's crab juice. It's crab juice. Dude. Oh, that's crab juice. juice. Oh, sorry, not clam juice. Yeah. Clam juice is actually a real thing. Clam juice is called hakalash, and that's what we call the deli at the, uh, the old, the old office. Office. Yeah, we used yeah, to yeah. call it hakalash because yeah. of that, yeah. Uh, no. It's so racist. It was, uh, <laughs> it was super racist. Um, but it was a magical experience. It was a wonderful hot dog. I'll never have that. I again. wonder how much because I actually ate it right there in Times Square. You have to eat it right and there. And I could almost, almost imagine like a like, like a, camera like panning a, like around a camera you. Three sixty shot. Right, and, you're cool. and I, I think that all becomes it's like the part, illusionist. It becomes part of the experience. Well, it's like it's like your American dream moment. Like you, you for sure you've had a hit movie and uh, you know all these right. other things. You're, you're eating the hot but dog. eating the hot dog in Times yeah. Square has yeah. to be one I of those. Like, right up there. I on felt the like list. Masioka in Heroes. Yeah. 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 Made it. And suddenly it's all empty. So there we go. All right. 
Um, right. Not a whole lot of tech news because we're recording. Who needs it? Look, we're doing fine without I, it. I was having a nice technology. conversation. Should we talk about Curb for a while? Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's let's hit the high points on news. Let's pretend we're making a serious all show right, here. All right, go on. It's Tuesday, so we haven't had a full week's of new worth of news because previously mentioned vacations, work stuff. Thursday is not a day to record, and we always are up by Thursday. I just can't get That's those Belgian style fries out of my head. They sound I, so I would, good. Right there's now. nothing I would like more than what lunch could be better right than now? a big plate of Belgian style French fries, a New York style hot dog. Is there anywhere around here you can get that? Uh, Hayes Valley. No, I mean you like, have a you car. Know. Yeah, we could drive <laughs> over there. Well, there's the and there's the place <laughs> on um, on uh, Mission. Or in the mission. It's either of mission or Valencia. Which one is it? The, the Fritz. The Bel oh, yeah, 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 one that's yeah. actually the Belgian-style place. This one is a Belgian-style place, too. The Hayes oh. Valley one. You should go there. It's, it's. I think it's better than Fritz. You know what they say. If it's Tuesday, this must be Belgium. Really? Yeah, I heard Who that. Who says somewhere. that? I can't remember. For yeah, some reason, Belgium, stuff. in some parts it's of the galaxy, more civilized parts of the galaxy, is the most offensive thing you can say. Think about that. What? Yeah, you know, uh, most gratuitous use of the word Belgium in a serious screenplay. It's a Douglas Adams joke from Life, the Universe, and Everything, uh, or Restaurant at the End of the Universe or something. If you haven't read those, you're a bad person. Well, I've read them. I just don't, don't remember, remember every joke. You should commit them to memory. They're, they're brilliant jokes. Um, okay. First things first. Uh, Google Nexus, Galaxy Nexus is out this week. Uh, pricing, $300 on, on Verizon contract. on contract. Yeah. And uh, Verizon is causing a bit of a stir with their blocking of Google Wallet. On the Nexus phone. Do you think that this is something normal people care about, or just grognards? No, I think I, I think normal people will eventually care about it. I mean, if if you live in San Francisco, you've probably seen those Google Wallet uh, places in stores that you can pay with your phone. Yeah, it has NFC. So does the Sprint Nexus S, and that is currently the only phone that now officially supports Google Wallet. So, like, I don't understand something about how the no the contactless payment stuff works. In order to use this, do I have to, like, does my Point of payment, place of payment, whatever they're called, at the grocery store, have to support Google Wallet. Yes. Or will Google Wallet work with through the Mastercard thing and all the other ones? Well, that they are have out a partnership there? with the Mastercard thing, so yeah. And so you should just touch it; it'll just work regardless of. It's like an ATM. If or is if, it like ATMs pre pre like ATM networks where they could all talk to each other and charge you five dollars? Theoretically, the former. Okay, but it needs to be the Mastercard, Citibank stuff now. Okay. And there's a separate standard that Verizon subscribing to and AT and T and T Mobile and right? T Mobile. So Sprint is the only one that supports it. What's the right other now. standard called? It's Issy uh, or so Illy I, or something I like forget. that. Yeah. I, I, sh I we talked about this last night yeah. on uh, not a jar, J no jars allowed. But I, I forgot to uh, look it up afterwards. Uh, so yeah, that that I don't think that that's a. It's like, not a deal breaker for the Google Nexus, but people are bitching rightly so because it's a Nexus phone. It's the Google Nexus. It's this is. It should They're be the Googliest of Google phones. Yes, and for Verizon to block services. Well, that's Verizon. Well, I mean, that's what, that's what telcos do. This is why when, when the original Nexus One came out and you bought it straight from Google and had nothing to do with the carrier, it was my most exciting phone moment in a long time. I, I, was, I was thoroughly excited about that, and then that was I don't know if you buy the, the phone off contract, if that still applies. Um, I assume that if you buy a... Uh, I assume if you buy it off contract, then it's a different experience. No, I think it's... But it's an LTE buy, phone. If you buy it from Verizon. Well, no, no, if you buy it unlocked off contract. Right. Have they even announced Verizon when the, uh, their version of the Galaxy Nexus will be available? It's out this week. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. That was how I left this been conversation. A lot, of, a lot of frustration. You were fondling the Lumia, weren't you? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm already, I've already moved on beyond the Galaxy Nexus to the, uh, to the Lumia 800, which is beautiful. So, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. It just came in literally moments before I opened, we started the show. So we, we haven't spent, you have spent more time with it than anybody else at this point, yeah, Gary. Yeah, tested website. That's already. good. Does it load well? Does it look uh, nice? It looks kind of, it doesn't look great to be slow. honest. Okay. Well, but we haven't phone, optimized for it The phone itself yet, is, well, we'll get to it, but yeah. it's lovely. Um, so, okay. So Galaxy Nexus pricing, $300 on contract, $750 mm -hmm. off, right? I think a lot of people are still, people on Verizon Two years after the Droid One came out, off contract, I've been waiting for this, and they will pick it up. It's LTE, which is interesting because at the same same time, Verizon is bitching at Microsoft because of the fixed nature of Windows Phone uh, about not having LTE phones available on Verizon because they look at LTE as a big sales point for them, and without LTE Windows phones, they're less likely to push Windows phones on Verizon. It seems yeah. like you so. know, there's a survey for uh, iPhone 4S owners. Two biggest complaints for the iPhone 4S: number one is battery life. Number two is no 4G, no LTE. Uh, okay. That seems like I, the battery life I can see. I think that Apple needs to do some stuff to help work people through 
turning off notifications. Like one it's of not the notifications, it's push oh, stuff, dude, there's push email. I've that's what I'm saying. Off. Is push notifications or just push email? Uh, push email. If you if you Period. only have push notifications for the stuff that matters, you don't have battery problems. And location if you services. always say yes when something says, "Hey, can I send push notifications?" Yeah. then you're going to have battery problems. That's kind of what. Like, why does Scribble Knots need to send me push notifications? I've filtered down my push notifications to just the really basic things that I want. A yeah. because of the battery issue you just mentioned, but more because they're annoying. Yeah, I, I don't want to get. Here's here's what I, I have I, Twitter and email and calendar and and Twitter and only weather only for people here's, who are following. Here's what you. I would yeah. love. I would love following. it if the push notification settings were a bit more dynamic so that I could say, don't send me push notifications between 10 o'clock at night oh, that would be and 8 o'clock in the morning. I would just I keep my, my, keep my phone happen. and my iPad yeah. by my bedside. The fucking iPad goes off at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's your moving words of friends. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'll deal with it in the morning. Right. You're fucking waking me <laughs> up for it's, that? It's, it, that I is, turn all that shit off now. That is absolutely ridiculous. I, I mean, it's... And, and there's no. This is one of my. This is my big complaint about iOS five. Like they fixed so much stuff in iOS five, um, but the the granularity of notifications. For example, if you have your phone in silent, you have headphones in, and somebody sends you a text, it doesn't give you an audible alert. Okay. Right. Correct. Which is insane because it, the only way you're going to know that that the text phone came in, uh, my phone vibrates all the fucking time. It vibrates nonstop when it's in silent mode. Every time you get a push notification, it vibrates. You just want more customization. I want to be able to say, okay, text always make a sound. I'm with you. I want more granularity, especially on the push notifications. Leah uh, uh, mentioned a good idea last night that she wanted to be able to set, have ringer volumes also adjustable by time. So like after 8 o'clock, yeah. the ringer volume goes down to a lower level and well, then comes back up in the morning. These are, like things, these are things that you can do on Android with third-party apps because they can tie in at a much lower level. Right. But Apple then you won't have... let a lot of third-party apps exactly. go to those core APIs. Exactly. Or they may not even be core APIs. They may just have tied directly into the low levels of the system. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think a one of the one of the my favorite hacks of all time was this app that ran on Windows Phone five or six. I can't remember Windows Mobile six. So five years ago, pre iPhone. And it would look at what cell tower and what Wi-Fi network you were connected to and change the behavior of the phone based on that information. So when you re got home, it knew, okay, you should I should turn the volume up really loud because he's probably going to put his phone in the bedroom and they won't hear it when it rings or whatever. You do that now with GPS. Well, you can, but not on iOS. Right. Um, theoretically. Theoretically, that is that stuff is possible. So you should be able to set this, uh, the same way you can location gate reminders. You should be able to location gate phone behaviors. And yeah. I think that's something that will come be, like, in it, the future. It should know that when I'm plugged in to yeah. the, the cord, then, you know, that's bedtime. should behave different. Yeah. Yeah. Not in my pocket. It's, of course, on the other hand, when you have that kind of complexity, they're already having problems with iOS where there's so much complexity that it's difficult to, ex to like, new users have an overwhelming experience. Yes, there's well, iOS yeah, 5. You can, do, you can do it on different levels. If you don't want to mess with it, then okay. But there needs to be – you need to be able to drill down more for people that want to customize. Uh, I mean, again, Apple is already providing quite a lot of – customization over their notifications but it, you need more like like primarily i would love to love to be able to shut them off during the small hours when i yeah. don't want them and they're actually just annoying just yeah. just advanced say, settings yeah, yeah. He, here's only take calls between 10 p.m and so then if somebody needs you in an emergency they can call you that's also great i mean that, but that's the thing is if they if they gave you the turn everything off and then you missed emergency calls at four o'clock yeah, in the morning. Yeah, well, I would want that, but I'd want even more granularity. I would want to be able to put certain people on a whitelist where they can call me anytime. Right. Because you know, like if you, you family members or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you get that call that you you don't want it, but at three a.m., you know, something bad is or something amazing, babies and deaths, whatever things that are amazing. <laughs> right. For one wow, way or another, okay. you want or babies killing people, right? Murderous as, babies. As Larry, as Larry David said in Covering Enthusiasm, you know, you know, there's usually a cutoff, but for things like babies and deaths, there's no cutoff. You go all yeah. night. Yeah. yeah. So you want to again? That's the kind of granularity that you need. There you go. Um, I uh, on the other hand, Apple like one of the things that I don't like about Lion, and I think this is a problem that's generally like this is the challenge for Apple going forward is as they add more complexity to iOS, they have to make it uh, accessible to to normals. Like my dad has to still be able to pick up an iPhone and do all the stuff that he needs to do but with it. But it's like Norm says, and just advanced settings. You don't have exactly. to go there unless you don't want to. But I mean, it's he, not like you have to turn on the settings and be yeah. immediately. I don't think Norm would be compelled to go, you know, investigate all the settings. Power just user they're settings they're is on a separate screen. You go there separately. But the basic settings yeah. are very simple. Yeah, um, what's, what's so difficult about that? Have you noticed iOS five is a little buggier than previous versions of iOS? My phone. No, is, I haven't noticed that. I've noticed that my apps crash as much as they ever did. Yeah. With more complexity. 
comes more bugs. responsibility and well and, uh, and comes more like with great complexity with comes great, great responsibility yeah, exactly. exactly you know it's what peter parker's dad uh, uncle said uncle ben yeah, I think the people, rice guy i think people already got the joke yeah i just wanted to make the rice guy joke and make it less funny with every rice guy yeah uncle well there's ben. another uncle ben who makes rice oh, okay well that, that actor will's doing some comedy experimentation uh, here. Uh, don't please don't oh my god i just got a tweet from my wife that says Hey, you are always right, capital always. So annoying. Ears do continue to grow your whole life. So older people do actually have bigger ears. We were looking at old people on the internet the other day and pictures of relatives and stuff. And I said, look, their ears are so I'm much bigger really hold back from in relation to their heads. Now, but okay. Well, Gary's ears are the biggest of all of us. But yeah, so ears are cartilage, so they keep growing your entire life. So your ears will continue to grow as you get older. I don't doubt that you were right about that, but I think you are always right is a bit strong. I think yeah. that's a bit strong too, but you know. In arguments with my wife, I am right significantly more often than I am not somebody right. on Gaff, loves somebody, that. somebody on the tested yeah. thread on Gaff posted a great little comment about you saying, wouldn't it be great like if tested, it was something like if tested lived in, was around in the 70s and 80s, what the questions would have been like. And it was like someone writing in saying, or listening, doing an audio question saying, should I get VHS or Betamax? And we're going, definitely go with Betamax. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I told people not to buy so HD is it DVD. It's so true. true. It's so true. I told people not to buy HD DVD or Blu-ray. Did you? I, yeah. I told people to buy HD DVD. Good job, Chan. Because I invested in it. Fist bump. Yeah, I yeah, saw all those HD so DVDs. You, so, King so you, Kong looks I actually, awesome. I, I actually went Fun. both, but I wanted Blu-ray to win. And Why so, did you want Blu-ray to win? I just felt like it because HD DVD is just such a shitty name. It's just, Blu-ray is a shitty name. Blu-ray sounds like a fish. It's three less it syllables. Sound like a fish. The it pro- sounds like a it's fish. It's two syllables versus five. The problem with it HD makes DVD more sense. and also HD uh, DVD, DVD, DVD. No, no, it just, just sounds. I got bad. DVDs and I got the HD DVDs. They, if they just call, if they just call it HD DVD, that's a good name. And, and double, double yeah. purpose the D yeah. in the middle HD DVD. That's, that makes well, sense. So I, don't, the, I don't think that was why HD DVD failed. It's because no. Toshiba did not make the right money deals. The problem, the, the other thing is HD DVD was an inferior standard. It had smaller capacity on the disc. Not that it really Ooh, matters. I think there are some people out there that will tell you that, 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 that they see it differently. I understand. There's always, there's always you know, fringe cases. You've activated, Those du- du- you've activated Blu-rays a, are, a small are defense pretty, force pretty there, I believe. Yeah. I, I also respect people who realize that HD DVDs did, did not have the hyphen. You have HD activated the HD DVD. DVD DF. The thing oh. I didn't, the thing I didn't want to see was Sony <laughs> win the 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 next gen format wars. But we we're already past that. So what an ugly late. dark period that was. Well, no, the worst was CES three years ago, because the big uh, Warner Brothers deal. And there was yeah, it was oh, Warner yeah, Brothers because it, it totally cut the legs out of the HD DVD uh, announcement. If right? you went to yeah. if you went to CES that year, all the bags, like you know, because they gave out all the big banners. Bags, all, Everything was Toshiba HD DVD because they spent so much money yeah. on the CS. Yeah. And that like, wasn't. They had those enormous Brothers banners. announcement basically was the final nail in the coffin. And that was yep. a week before CS. I, apparently there was a whole thing where like the Toshiba rep had to come out and do some kind of keynote and was like just visibly distressed. No, they canceled distressed. it. Yeah. They, they canceled they, the they whole presentation. It. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, that's it. It's all over. Yep. Well, but we surrender. Look, look back. We've had a lot of dopey things like that. Do you remember that there were two DVD recordable formats? Yeah. DVD, DVD plus, plus and DVD and hyphen. hyphen are... And then plus yes, hyphen. I do remember yeah. that. I remember being confused about which was which. Yeah, yeah. and the DVD dash was better, but there dash was no was clear winner better. on that. Like, that was one of the... No, it, it became the same thing. Right. The, the, you ended up having all the drives do both, and you can go to the store and buy both kinds of discs today. I mean, that kind of stupid format war, it's been going on for a really long time, and it's really, really damaging you know, for normal users. Last year, people kind of scoffed when we wrote a story about you don't need an optical drive, you're building a PC. If you're building a PC today, would you buy an optical drive? For gaming, Period. yeah, I rip DVDs. Yeah, because it's so. you, you because still it, rip DVDs, really. Yeah. I would buy. Well, for I'm really, still ripping Blu-rays. I would buy an optical drive today still because a, it's such a cheap part. Why not have it? And Thirty-five dollars for the best. I would never. There's still I would plenty get, of games out there that you can't one. get digitally. Like I think we're not there yet, where you completely can say goodbye to the. I drive. would buy USB. Well, if we're talking about a tower, why not? There's plenty of space. You have plenty of SATA yeah. ports. There's no reason not to. Yeah, thirty-five dollars. Thirty dollar part. Yeah, thirty-five dollars. You get a better video card. It's but a lot, lot, but it's a, a lot harder to put windows on it. USB key. It's a lot harder. What about to put what about games on. that you want to buy that aren't yet available digitally? It's not a thing. No, yeah. What game? When was what the last time you got buy, a yeah. game on a People disc? People buy Battlefield Three on Amazon and you get a big box and it's just the code in the box. There's a disc in there too. No, they, oh, there was no disc. Giant box. All the packaging I haven't, I haven't inside been, is just a card with the code. I haven't on really it. been keeping up. Is it true to say now that if you want to be a gamer, if, if, if a gaming purposes only, you completely don't need the drive? 
I yeah. think so, yeah. Unless you're playing old games. Right. What do you need to drive for aside from song windows? And ripping. Ripping discs is what I use it for. I use I, I actually have burned through three of Why those thirty five dollar Samsung D V D drives the, in the last five oh, years. Geez. Just because I ripped 600 DVDs. And I'm probably going to do it over again because the computer's fast enough now that it doesn't matter. And I want to f- do better bit rates and it's, have commentary tracks and all that stuff. It's a moribund format. Not no. just DVD, but like optical storage in general. Well, the blu ray still moving a fair, fair number of units, but I, it's nothing like DVD was. The heyday of selling $15 DVDs to the entire world is done. Plenty of people have said that they think Blu-ray is the last optical format, and I think that's probably correct. Well, it, in order for that to be the case... Um, you have to assume that bandwidth is going to increase, or it's not get more expensive, or or some, or there's going to be a massive compression advancement. Well, yeah, I'm, we're ta- we're talking about five to a five to ten year life cycle for Blu-rays going for how long? How long? How long? Well, is we're DVD five been years into Blu-ray now. Four years into Blu-ray, right? When did Blu-ray and HD DVD launch? It was, it was around the time the years. Xbox launched yeah. and the PS3. I think Blu-ray. I think Blu-ray. PS3. So yeah, five I years. Think Blu-ray's got a got a good. And it, it was out before then. I think was Blu-ray's got a, yeah. a good decade left before it really starts to we start to feel like it's over. And by then, I think the you know the internet's going to be in the kind of shape that it needs to be to take over. That is wildly optimistic. I don't optimistic. think Blu-rays are going to go away because and pricing is so cheap. Remember when DVDs used to be thirty dollars when they first came out and we're okay $20 is a great price point and now you're DVD. seeing now 15, you're seeing Blu-rays, Blu-rays at $10 Blu-rays. well but they're yeah, on sale when, when Blu-rays first came out and they were like and some are like the Disney ones yeah. are still gouge you $30, $40 yeah. for a Blu-ray but a lot of a lot of titles yeah. You, yeah. Can, you can get the Book of well, Eli on Blu-ray for only $10 stuff comes out now uh, for nine ninety nine. what a value I mean, so- by Grabthar's <laughs> hammer <laughs> what, what a savings, savings. But but stuff comes out at nineteen ninety nine now. Like the launch price is twenty five bucks and sure, it's, it's available MSRP. for twenty bucks. I just on, bought the, the I just bought day. the Portlandia Blu ray and even on Amazon it was twenty five bucks and I felt like geez that's like that's that's, that's to, a bit much. That used to be the no, that used to be cheap for a Blu ray. Now it feels like that's on the high end. And also hard drive is space is getting more expensive. But only temporarily though. True, but over time when you want if you want high quality and you're ripping Blu rays, you're gonna buy, have to buy a ton of two terabyte drives. Uh, you, not, and also you want redundant well, backup. Each, each two terabyte drive is going to hold a uh, thousand DVD, a thousand Blu-rays, a hundred Blu-rays. What, uh, 10, 10 gigs of rip or what? Yeah, I'm ripping them about ten gigs. So ten gigs divided by two thousand. And is again, 200. in ten years, you're going to be able to get a That's fucking a exabyte drive for like a hundred bucks. Yeah. So the, the 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 gating factor is bandwidth and telecoms. Right yeah. now, with Comcast talking about having a value add fee. Look at how I brought this back to news. With Comcast talking about a value add fee for people who are heavy users of Netflix, because they don't want the, the you know they they don't want a free ride for Netflix subscribers on their network. Yeah. Then you know it's gonna streaming from iTunes or Amazon or Netflix or whoever is is not something that the telcos are going to be really down with. So it doesn't. There's no incentive for them to make their existing infrastructure faster. Because nobody, there's no competition. Like there's nobody in most municipalities saying, "Hey, we have hundred megabit fiber coming to your house." So what, why would Comcast or Time Warner or AT and T increase the speed of their broadband network? Which you're gonna have to have. You right now we're streaming 720p. Even going to 1080p is a massive bandwidth increase, almost double. Yeah. So you, you know it, it's it's a like there's is, a card horse chicken egg problem. And this here. is what the bandwidth is being used for. Right? Like every week there's a new a new statistic coming out saying that Netflix re- accounts for the majority yeah. of, of, of of traffic. But so. Comcast doesn't want to make that easier for you. They want to keep selling you on demand at five dollars a pop or fifty dollars a month for 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 or one hundred and twenty dollars a month for c- cable with HBO. So like there there has to be a massive infrastructure improvement for us to get to a point where most people can stream 1080p much less and that's 2K or 4K resolution whatever is next. Yeah. Our wires were laid down years and years and yeah. years ago. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting cuz my parents the town that my parents live in uh they're in Bristol Tennessee. So it's a little town right on the Tennessee Virginia border. The local electric company started running fiber years and years ago and it was just dark for a long time and then about 4 years ago I think they flipped it on. And my parents have a faster internet connection than I do that I think they pay $40 a month for. And it's faster upstream, faster downstream, zero latency, fiber. They can stream 1080p video from the internet, which is – and, like, they can get all that Xbox Media Room stuff to watch TV from the local local provider on. It's crazy. And here we are in San Francisco with 20 megabit Comcast that's up and down like crazy. So, anyway, I don't know why we're talking about this, but – uh, should we talk about the Android the the Android Google Plus post that I linked last night? Sure. What was that? You? 
So uh, there were two posts on Google Plus, and I don't remember the names, but, but they were by people who were close to Android. Diane uh, Hepburn. Diane Hepburn is one, and I don't remember what her role is on on the Android team, but it was. Uh, uh, I think she was working in UI stuff, but not core renderer stuff. So she started. She had this post talking about why Android feels laggy, which is something we have talked about at length. It's a big problem on this podcast. Big problem. Uh, and basically said, look, they've had bits and pieces of the UI have been hardware accelerated, but really they aren't all hardware accelerated. And there's problems with flipping on OpenGL because then that adds doubles the amount of memory that you need at an idle state for the phone and all this other stuff. It's very interesting. Uh, it, it, there's more. Hardware acceleration coming online with Ice Cream Sandwich, obviously, because they're making things a little bit better every time. Uh, but then there was another post from a former intern at Google who's going to be an intern in January with Microsoft on Windows Phone. Uh, I assume he's a college kid. Uh, talking about other reasons that, that Android has lag. And this is something that I've noticed, but I didn't understand the reasoning for. So it's really interesting to find out. But the reason iOS doesn't lag, uh, doesn't have UI lag, is it has to do with threading. So a thread is basically an application, uh, a single program or group of programs running together on the phone. Usually it's a sequential thing, and um, there are a lot of them running on a phone at one time. So remember, you preemptive Processes. multitasking and all this stuff that we heard about in the late 90s when Windows 95 and, and OS 10 were not in parity on that stuff, or OS 9, I guess, at that point. Um, and, it, and so iOS, and I think Windows Phone, give exclusive first level priority, highest priority to UI, UI. rendering. Yep. Uh, Android doesn't do that. It gives it's why it, even if an app feels really slow on iOS, you, know, yeah. an app, you can hit the home button. And, and you'll still go back to the home back, screen. It'll be really right. smooth. Or when you're rendering a web page, if you touch the screen and start dragging, the web page stops rendering, but you can still drag the phone around yes. and it works. Um, and that's because exclusive top level priority goes to that stuff, and then everything else is one notch down. I think that's the way. That's the right way yeah. to do it. It seems to be the right way to do it. Um, it, or at least do that for the keyboard and the. I think you have to do that with the, for on screen keyboards to work. Because well. the first impressions are important, and your overall experience is important. If I pick up an, if I'm, you know, oh, what kind of phone shall I get? Let's try this Android phone. It's going, get, 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 get. I'm like, oh. Well, but it's it's not even that. It's not even about the drop frame at sixty frames a second. Uh, so one of the things the uh, Catherine. Catherine. Catherine talked about was render time uh, uh, for a number of pixels on uh, per, per frame at 60 frames a second on a phone. 60 frames a second basically means or that Diane, the phone, I'm sorry. Diane, sorry, has not, has 20 milliseconds to render each frame, right? And if it can't render a frame in 20 milliseconds, it's going to drop a frame and go on to the next one. So when you're talking about large phones, phones with large screens and relatively underpowered GPUs, then you end up having some real performance issues. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Real nitty gritty. It's in my Google Plus. You can find it there. If so you what are they, it's on so Tesla.com. Are, are they just, what are these? And, and it's on What Tesla. was the com. point of these posts? The point of these posts was, hey, here's the real reason why Android has this this lag that some people find really hard to work around. And why and different hardware that might seem exactly. similar you know, performs differently. Why yeah. don't they fix it? Uh, well, I think. Well, in Ice Cream Sandwich, it's being fixed because there's a, f a hardware or a flag toggle. Uh, on apps and universal apps all have it. But one of the first things that we saw with the hands-on with ICS was people saying the lag is still there, right? Uh, well, I think the lag is going to still be there until they change the the way the renderer works. Yeah, they need they need to change it because I think it makes Android look bad. Well, and and the thing is, it's not about looking bad. It's about things like the keyboard, like drop frames when you're trying to type with a touch keyboard That's are good. really really bad. Um, because it makes it may, you know it means that you basically are going to have to go back and retype stuff, which. Right. Anytime you have to go back and retype stuff, they've failed in some core way. Anytime the keyboard has to catch up, that's really bad. It's not yeah. good, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I thought that was really interesting. There's a story about it on the site right now. I think Wes wrote it up this morning. Um, you should definitely check it out. If you care about that stuff, it is Thanks for explaining it, Google. Now fucking fix it. Yep. Well, the, I think these were both unofficial people who were formerly associated with, not current employees. So okay. they're talking about the problem. Not spokespeople. Not spokespeople. Well, it's good to know. It's, it's good Super to know nervous. the reason why. I mean, it's one of the things I really like about Google Plus is that you're seeing people who are inside Google posting kind of private internal stuff. Yeah, because there's no one else Google Plus. posting there. Well, you're well, posting there. Basically me. You're there. <laughs> basically me and a bunch of ex-Google employees and a, bunch and, of, and a bunch of people. And Veronica. Yeah. And a bunch of people who really want to sell you real estate in Thailand. Man, really? I, how oh, much yeah, is real estate one. in Thailand? Is it do you know what? Do you know what I spend most of my time doing on Google Plus? Deleting spam? Delete comment, block user, report profile, rinse, repeat. That's, That's it. Intern's job. You that should get an assistant bad. do that for you. 
Uh, so speaking of Google Plus, <laughs> the Gary assistant is that like that episode of Seinfeld with Kramer and the and the intern? You need to get an intern, dude. No, the Seinfeld one you're thinking about is when George we becomes about Jerry's relationship intern. Gary's Gary. Well, I'm talking about also Kramer got an intern. Yeah. When he was making the oil bladder for uh, for for oil tankers, the rubber oil bladder, That's and he right. dropped it off the That's roof right. of the building. Or I would the like I would like an assistant. We talked about this. Not because I really need one. Just no, no, I don't want to have to do boring. Yeah, like like in a stuff. yeah. Can you do the dishes? Would you have a room in your house that you could let someone like live in? Assistant wouldn't be no, a live, wouldn't, wouldn't be a slave. Live in. Wouldn't be a live in. Okay, take yeah. out Huey. Yeah, walk the dog. Get my get my dry cleaning. So you can mail, optimize. Mail my mail that yeah. needs to go out. <laughs> and and block assholes on Google Plus. Yeah, pick yeah. up the phone to make it sound like I'm. You know. Would you Would you then dictate like Google Plus and Twitter notes? Hey, take a Twitter. No, that I, that I would still you, want to right, you, you, but, like, Siri but, Plus. But they would be responsible for going through anything yeah. I post and deleting all the spam. You should and stuff. you should find someone named Siri hey, to be your that assistant. That would be like a requirement. Yeah, or I could just pay them to. I'm just going to call you Siri. To them that your way, name yeah. might be Peter, but for in this house, you're Siri. Yeah, but if I do that, half the time I ask them to do something, they're going to say uh, the network's not available right now. <laughs> That's true. I it's it's down yeah, all the time. The, I actually, the I, I would want to most anti-Apple podcast we've ever done. Well, it's funny. We get the Lumia in the room. and the Lumia yeah, yeah, changed the everything. It has changed everything. Uh, you know, I hope Falcon's in the chat because he'll be real happy. But if he's not, he will be on Thursday. Uh, Google Plus pushed a new iOS app last night. Saw it. Yeah. They changed the icon. I don't know what else. Uh, it's a little bit better. Uh, there's still dopey things like when you click a link in a post to another Google Plus post, it opens in a browser instead of in the app. I don't understand that. That makes no sense to me. You can't manage uh, pages from there that I was able to figure out. Uh, push notifications. It's still notifying me on stuff that I told it absolutely never notify me on. Oh, I don't get that. Well, I, so I get so you're saying it always not good notifies me for when you people to follow Google me. Plus. Yeah, I mean, the thing they need to do is instead of working on making their app better, Make an API for that and let, let the millions of people that want to make Google Plus apps for iOS and Android Yeah, like it. Twitter. Yeah. I mean, the reason Twitter, the reason Twitter apps are so, so polished at this point and good is that it was an incredibly competitive landscape. Competition from 2008 to 2010. to be better because yeah. you want to have the best one or they'll go get someone else's. Yeah, exactly. So let the, let the people build the apps and then buy the ones that are good. What do you use for Twitter on your desktop and I, on your phone? I use... Um, TweetDeck on your, on your desktop, right? I use TweetDeck at home on Windows. I stopped using TweetDeck when I upgraded to Lion because uh, Air, Air sucks, sucks so bad on Lion. Air it is pushing Windows yeah. forward and back. And also it makes laptops heat up a lot. I don't, okay. I don't care about that. But So I use uh, the official Twitter for... I'm the, I'm pretty much official Twitter's bitch. I am um, now as well. I use official Twitter uh, on my desktop and on my phone. I, I miss, really like it. I miss the tweet deck columns. Official Twitter on yeah, phone. Yeah, column, columns are nice. Website. Just use the website. You're um, weird. There's functionality on the website you don't get. You don't get push notifications. I don't... I'm not addicted to Twitter. I like to reply to people. I like to I like to talk to them. I like to let them know that, uh, the, hey, I appreciate their feedback. The at mentions and more do. tab... Is uh is only I available hate on the that. I hate that tab though. The act no, I the hate activity, the activity tab is terrible. I hate the activity. At mentions and more is different. Hmm. Uh, what else should we talk about? Let's see. Uh, Dell. Guess what, guys? Dell is bailing out of the Android tablet business. They can. They can. The Dell Streak Five, which was the first Dell Streak, long time ago. And That's now, the shoe phone. Yes. And now Dell Streak Seven also discontinued. I didn't even know they were in the tablet business. Yeah. Well, nobody cared. So if Dell says tablets, Android tablets aren't worth it, but uh, I don't know that uh, I would Motorola say Motorola doubling down. Yeah, if if Samsung or Motorola or Asus had bailed out of the tablet, well, Samsung tablet market, really, Sa Samsung's kind of in the state where they're, they're trying to get out of their legal problems first. You think Dell would oh, be before, a, would, would, be a, would be a logical yes. partner for Windows Eight tablets? Dell does make uh, uh, Dell will be a logical I think that's, partner for Windows 8 tablets. That's probably the smart bet right now for manufacturers. Big, big. Maybe OEMs. that's why part of why they're dishing it. They're going to transition over to this. Yeah. Well, especially people with x86. Uh, um, Google. See, see, here's the thing. Google. Ha, ha, we've talked about this before. Google really hasn't done any ads promotion for Android tablets at all. You know, Windows is going to promote the fuck out of yeah. Windows 8 tablets. Yeah. And there are reports out saying that most people. Now, analysts saying that most people won't, most PC users won't care about Windows 8. It's going to be really a tablet OS. From what I've seen mm. so far, I don't know if I'm going to upgrade to Windows 8 on my desktop. Yeah, it might be a, we might be in an XP situation for desktop users because I don't know that I'm I want. I'm perfectly happy with Windows 7. 
I'm uncomfortable with some changes. Yeah, I, like you don't you miss the start menu. I, I, exactly, I will miss the start menu, and then they've addressed some of these changes in, in their build date. Are they still on board? Are they still planning to remove the start menu and do the Metro start screen? Yeah, it's Metro start screen. Yeah, I mean, I, I the thing is, I don't understand that. Like, if if you're looking for search driven application launch, why not just do a keyboard shortcut like Spotlight, where you can just launch it straight from the desktop? No, but they, they it's there, but it'll take up the entire screen. It's search within Metro. But I don't want that. I don't want that. I know. I don't want lag the, I, from I, the I don't. Switch. W- I don't want it either. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I expect there will be a beta at CES. That's about a month away uh, now. February so. is what everyone says for the beta. Oh, really? They'll announce it at CES, but it won't you come out. You don't think they'll do it that night? They did CES. it that night before. I'm going to take a Windows laptop with us just so we can put it on and be ready to go. Hey, if we this need to. time uh, next month we'll be at CES. I know. Well, you will. I'll just be in Vegas. <sighs> yeah. Uh, so we're, you're, are you going to ride with us? Are I you, think are so. You doing I'm, the car yeah, I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm leaning drive towards stream. it. I'm leaning towards it. The drive stream. Wow. If I'm going to be a driver, though, you don't, I, have, to driver. You don't have to drive. You can just ride. Yeah, You're welcome to drive if you want. You but you have to driving sometimes is such a long drive that sometimes dry, you want to do at least a bit of the drive. I did the whole thing last time. Holy shit, that's a long drive. You didn't it do the whole thing. The whole way there. The whole way there, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a long a drive. I will, I'll have my uh, 3DS. Yeah. You'll have the 4G hotspot. I'll have my 4G hotspot. hotspot. I'll have my Kindle. Yeah, fuck it. I'll play yeah. this. I'll play yeah, this. Exactly. You can entertain all of us. We have an person. We had a sing along last year. Uh, Karaoke, spontaneous. <laughs> we we sang South Park songs. No, we no we didn't. We tried to sing South Park songs from memory. We couldn't remember the lyrics and didn't remember half the lyrics. Yeah. But we it's one of those things where you start the song off thinking you know the entire song and it gets to the part where and then I you just get to blame Canada. No, like, okay, fuck yeah. Anne Marie too. Yeah, exactly. Um, Firefox. Guess what? The number yeah. two browser. So in the talking world about is. competition. Uh, and competition being good, there might be f- less competition in the browser space. Well, so there's a lot of stuff happening with Firefox. First off, no longer the number two browser, according to, I guess, MPD or Nielsen. I can't remember who did that. B- bunch of, what's number two now? Chrome? Chrome. Chrome. Yeah. Chrome should be number one. It's the best. Uh, well, well, Chrome is on be, a pretty sharp IE rise. Is, uh, it's amazing it's, to me that IE is, is, I mean, yeah, let's face it, IE is number one by default. Right, it's because it's just there. It's Two packed. sweetest words in the English. The language. majority of the tech default, proletariat default. don't know any better. They just use it. Yeah, but you know, in the in the tech elite, the technorati sphere that we inhabit, I don't know a single person that uses IE. Uh, no. Well, web developers do because they need to test it to make sure it works for the most. You're using IE people. on your Windows Phone. Yeah. So w- one of the interesting things about this yeah, again, because I have to, because yeah. it's what's there. Yeah. I was uploading some video to S3, and to do that, uh, Amazon's S3 last night. To do that on Windows, like I have an app for it on Mac that I paid for, but on Windows I just use this Firefox plugin. Really? Yeah. You don't use uh, there's S3 Explorer. I mean, they're free apps. Oh well, I, I haven't gotten. They're really, they're I really good. I haven't gone deep there, but if okay. you have recommendations, I would love to hear them yes. after the show. Cloudberry, Amazon S3 Explorer. Okay, good to know. Um, so the, the you I, firing a Firefox, I hadn't done it in a while, and I was stunned at how kind of negatively I reacted to their traditional menu bar UI. Yeah, I don't like it at all. Like I, I remember when Chrome came out and the tabs on top was a dramatic departure from yep. browser design. And then slowly moving away from any menus, period. Yeah. And now the entire kind of app space is doing the same thing. Like, everybody's doing that. Well, vertical space is limited now, especially on laptops. Right. I mean, that's the thing. So I used to have nothing but trouble with Firefox. And in fact, the only reason why I even had it on my computer is back in the day, remember sometimes, you know, whatever, pri- I use Safari as my, or Chrome, I go back and forth in my primary browsers. It used to be back in the day that if a website for some reason didn't work on either of those browsers you go to firefox and it probably would work yeah because it's very well supported but now it's chrome now it's chrome now you, now I, I can't remember the, the only time i ever boot up firefox is when a new version comes out because i have this weird pathology where i have to have the latest version of software that if there's a, a patch weird. or an update i've got to got to get yeah, it that's weird but, but like the the last three times i've used firefox because there's a new version almost every it's very week trusting days. of you actually i went from six to seven and seven to eight and then i yeah. turned it on uploaded got the new version okay i feel good that i've got the new version never use it again. i had five when i turned on my computer no when I turned on the Windows now machine. it's on more than 10 yeah plus I, 10 I, I, now? I haven't used firefox probably in well, a year they, they on that computer increase the updates yeah, now it's more like chrome but a lot but of people a lot of power users like it because it's very plug-in friendly although chrome is, is chrome just is as at friendly this point as well, for yeah. the stuff i use um, the interesting thing about this this story, the Chrome story, is that Google, uh, because they built something that was incredibly developer friendly early on, they got all of the web developers using Chrome, which then, you know, if you look at, so Chrome, our sites work best in Chrome, 
because all the guys in the back develop using Chrome. And they mm. test other browsers as well, but Chrome is their primary browser. Uh, and as a result, Safari is good. Mobile Safari is pretty good. It's all the same. It's all WebKit core, based. Right? Yeah. yeah, all the Google stuff, uh, the Android stuff, I believe, is WebKit based. I don't know if that's true or not, actually. Maybe it's something different. You made the point the other day that Mozilla has basically been fucked twice now in the browser space. A when I well, came it wasn't, along and killed Netscape yeah. Navigator. But that was a that wasn't Mozilla. But it was those guys, but it was, right? Well, it was the same core. Firefox is kind of like the stepchild of. It's the grandchild. Netscape it's like the Navigator. great great nephew or something yeah. of Netscape Navigator. And now Navigator. it's been I know it's been screwed again by Chrome. Yeah, these guys can't get a break. It's kind of screwed by Microsoft. Well, too. they didn't innovate. They haven't innovated fast enough. I mean, if you look at the amount of time we spent using Firefox three and four. Uh, and and the length of time it took them to accelerate JavaScript rendering and all the stuff that Chrome launched with out of the box, add bookmark syncing, you know, Built all that stuff. PDF. Yeah, all of that stuff took too long. And people, as soon as there's a better alternative to a piece of free software, people will change. It might take a year. Here's a bigger problem for Mozilla. Uh, they don't make any money off Firefox except most of their money comes from Google. From ad deals. From, from that Google no, search from box. Google search, the yeah. default homepage. 84% of the revenue comes from Google. Well, default homepage and the search box. Yeah. Those two things. Google has less and less incentive to renew those deals. Well, and that, that deal is up in November. So Last month. It'll probably still continue. I don't think it's going to go away since a, a lot of people still use Firefox. But it's really, you know, Google decides their fate. Yeah. Well, and then the other thing is because of, of Firefox's open source status, they're unable to support things like H.264, HTML5 video and, and stuff like that, which puts them at a distinct competitive disadvantage for uh, philosophical reasons, which is unfortunate. I don't know. So Firefox, it's a thing. Not for much longer. No, it'll. I mean, it, 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 we'll see. Do you think I, you know? It's interesting. You always think of the the browser market is like somewhat calcified. Like for the longest time, it was. It's not uh, really it, it been was, though. Chrome, Chrome, Chrome was the last big entry that has now established itself Rock as like melt. a mainstream thing. That's what? Just based on? I know. I'm kidding. Rock melt. Like what? Say, say rock me it. Rock do me it. it. Rock, rock me it. Rock me it. Still like that better. Me too. No, no. Because no it's so one likes dumb. that better. Yeah. Like most internet startup companies have such stupid names that it just feels like it's the stupider it, right? the better. It's like suck it to me. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, okay, so uh, other stuff on the docket. Uh, anyway, yeah, but you're right. So Mozilla uh, 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 Mosaic, which was the first kind of graphical web browser launch. Netscape Navigator spawned out of that. Microsoft launched IE with Windows 95. Uh, OSR2, I think, right? It was around like 95, 90. I guess it was with Windows 95. I can't remember. And uh, and then IE took over. IE6 was supposed to be the last browser we'd ever need, according to Microsoft. And then Firefox uh, quickly uh, kind of rose out of that need, perceived need. Uh, and now, now ironically... Because in the IE6 days, remember, it was ActiveX problems. Like, there were all these ActiveX plugins. It was an incredible security problem. They had to start development of the browser again. IE7 came out of that. Now, Microsoft is sending notes to uh, contact addresses for websites. We got an email the other day that said, hey, from Microsoft, that said, hey, your website, uh, www.tested.com, uses plugins that aren't going to be compatible with IE10's Metro mode. So there's no Flash plugin for Metro IE10, uh, which means our site won't work properly on IE10 because we detect it as an IE browser and we render a plugin-friendly page. So we have to fix that before IE10 comes on out. That. Yeah. Well, I mean, we have a year. So and you, in a like, way, you think actually being second place, like Chrome is now in the browser yeah. market, is preferable because you know you. I mean, obviously Google's not in it to make money. Not well, yeah, they Chrome. are. Well, but not specifically through Chrome. It's just part of their whole money making. Well, it's a way to get people using Google search by right. default. Ex right, exactly. Yeah. But you know, it's, so it's good. So you've got a nice position in the market, but you're not number one. So you don't get targeted by hackers and virus and security exploit type people the way that IE does, only right. because it's the number one way to go well so well, do, you, do you guys think chrome can take over the number one slot from ie no i think no. with windows 8 uh that's another chance for ie to actually redeem itself well ar arguably well hold on at this point is there anything ie can do that's going to get you to use ie as your default browser well for windows 8 it will be a default browser on the tablet model and i don't know if chrome's i mean chrome's not going to look great in metro at the start 
So IE's gonna look best with Metro. I remember when IE9 came out and it was a big revamp and a big security revamp, big aesthetic usability revamp. Yeah, it's, a, it's going, a good release. We were going, ooh, this is really exciting. IE has been reborn. This could be this be cool. That's the last I ever heard of it. I still don't know anyone that uses it. Well, it's not for us. It's to give normal people a good web browsing experience. I, the, my only question is that Google is arguably one of the only companies out there that has a larger reach than Microsoft in terms of the number of users that touch its services and products every day. Because if you think about it, everybody that uses a computer pretty much is using Google, assuming they're not in China or someplace that, that you know, it's Google funny. blocked. None of us have mentioned Safari, and we all use Macs. I've I don't use Safari. I just said, Safari said it a while ago. That's the browser I use most, you know, day in, day out. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's a good browser. I know. What, I what like are you going to do with them? I like. Well, I mean, I, I used Chrome for the long time. I still have Chrome in my dock right next to it. Yeah. And I'll go, I'll go back and forth. But I liked... A lot of the lion. I like full screen. I like it's the full screen. Full screen. What's that? It does Chrome now, but it didn't. For yeah, a while. But it did lag. It took a while to catch up. But I mean, this fire. I, I don't know what Firefox's situation with full screen is on Mac at this point either. So. Why doesn't Facebook make its own browser? God, don't encourage them. We don't want that. I mean, they're the number one tr traffic site on the internet by yeah. far. Yeah. Twice as many as Google, which is insane. Yeah. You know, there's this whole thing. Facebook are trying to get people to just live inside their, their website. Yeah, they wouldn't be surprised. Why not make a whole browser? Well, I mean, works. at that point, they're one step away from being AOL circa 1995. Yeah. I mean, before, it literally. It all went horribly wrong. They're making a walled, no, right. a walled garden for the internet. You can, yeah. you can, well, they you want can go to Wikipedia they inside want to replace, Facebook. Yeah, they want to replace Google with Facebook. Right. They, want, that's, they want you to Social interact graph. with the web. That's where they're going. They are, they are building an ecosystem. Yeah, I, I don't. Um, Maybe Facebook should sponsor Mozilla. Facebook default, might actually sponsor and, and, Mozilla. And default Firefox. Buy uh, just buy it. I don't think they. I don't know. I don't know what the rules are with that because it's a it's a not for profit. I think. Anyway, Firefox is having issues. Uh, it's it's still a thing. I mean, it worked fine. I used it last night, but I, it I, crashed I, I so like, poorly for me. I, mean, I it's, like it's memory hog. Well, it's one of those things that I think I need to just wipe that that uh, profile entirely and start from scratch because I I mean my Firefox profile is probably ten years old at this point. Because it's come from machine to machine with me, and it has all sorts of weird shit installed. Um, let's let's talk about uh, the new. Let's talk about Xbox stuff, or do we want to talk about Kindle usability stuff first? Either. So, uh, well, first off, today, well, Tuesday when we're recording this, but two days ago for you guys listening to this on the on the audio, uh, Microsoft pushed out the now traditional annual update and redesign of the Xbox Live dashboard. Yeah, now as we record this, it's supposed to be out already, but there was a last minute uh, delay, delay yeah. right? Major Nelson oh, no. tweeted, it's, there, there'll be updates soon. It's not actually out right now. We have it in the office, just been using it for a while. I don't remember. Okay, we all remember the blades. Yep, that was the first one. We remember what we have. We know what we have now. Yeah, there was another one in between those I two. I don't remember what that one looks like. We'll pull it up on your laptop. Fact Can you check. describe it? Uh, it was green. It was green background. Uh, it did not have a friends list. It did not have that ad tab that's the first thing you see. Um, it was less okay. vertical scrolling, more horizontal scrolling. So it was intermediate uh, between. It was like green blades, basically, but the blades were redesigned. Have either of you used the new Metro? Uh, um, I've, I've, I've watched Jeff use it for the last two weeks. Probably. Now, it kind of actually made me think of the PlayStation UI because it's left to right it's horizontal scrolling well that makes sense on a on a 16 by 9 widescreen yeah. display i'm looking at the stuff that it's adding and i don't i don't really want to say bing you know find me batman games and i don't really want to be doing this well, well but i could just as easily do this which is actually considerably faster. less effort yeah, yeah. think and about faster and more and more reliable think about having search for all the video apps being able to search within all the video apps on your iphone though well or on net, your so iPad. netflix rather than having to type in there you go you i'm just say south park you can find me bing curb your enthusiasm and it'll pull it from netflix and hulu plus and hbo go and all the places that it's available that is the promise if it works if it works if it works that is tremendous now some of the channels are a little thin. Now he, he, here's my question. Or here's my problem with. Uh, well, hold on. Let's, let's do a high level, high level okay. overview first. So, so things that have been added. Okay. Cloud saves profile. Uh, oh, cloud uh, saves are on in this. Cloud one saves now? are in this. Oh, thank God! So I don't have to move my memory card yep. around anymore. And and profile Jeez. profiles between multiple Xboxes. Jeez. I don't know how the mechanics of that stuff works. So maybe that you have to type your password in or something that's worse than carrying the USB thumb Nothing drive Nothing is around. worse than that. Mm -hmm. I Holocaust. The Holocaust was worse than that, Gary. Okay, well, if you want to go there, that's yeah. kind of a bring down, dude. I'm sorry, Six man. Six million dead. Yeah. 
Well, you said nothing was worse than that. I just wanted to point what, within, out your, your within, hyperbole. Obviously within a reasonable context of technology. Uh-huh. Not ever. <laughs> so you, you think music DRM was less bad than having to carry your USB thumb drive upstairs and downstairs with you when you want to play a game in the you living room. You think what room. was less bad? DRM on music. iTunes that was DRM. Bad. The, I, the, the Motorola Rocker. Yeah, the Motorola Rocker was a bad product. It's just yeah. irritating because it can't like I guarantee you, whichever Xbox I want to use at any given time the memory card is in the other one. Well, think about it. Think about well, it. You, it's even worse. Well, you're special case because you have two mo- Xboxes, yeah, multiple Xboxes four. in your house. Four Xboxes in your house. <laughs> Most people have one. Okay. This is this is creative for people like me. <laughs> yeah, it, it it solves a problem that only the man has. Congratulations, 1%. I'm not the man. You're the man. No way am I. I'm not in He's wearing yeah. a gaff shirt. He can't be the man. I, I don't know. That that N could be an M that the right M, the right swipe got cut off of. Why would, what would that indicate? The man. It would be a, <laughs> the little lapel logo the for, the, for man. the man. No, I'm the 99%. Uh, so... So, <laughs> which includes that's exactly oh, two percent. No, no, we, we're not allowed to talk about politics. Oh, we are. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't think that's politics. I think that's class warfare. That's a different thing. Um, I think they're pretty closely related. The South, the South Park episode was very good. It was fantastic, actually. Uh, so, okay, uh, cloud saves, profile uh, migration, better connect support, better more accurate and more functionality. Uh, like a, the, a connect. The main instead of having it like a connect ghetto now. There's a the whole UI is connect friendly. I'm, yeah, I know, so I don't I'm almost Any, certain though that the connect function is for me will just be the voice stuff. The voice yeah. stuff is useful. That's I the don't thing. really want to do you want, that. And again, what Terry is doing for people listening is swiping minority broad report gestures style. with his hands. Uh, yeah. It's not. It's not hello. Ba- like, oh, no, content. no, it's not. It's not hello. It's, it's, no, it's hold it for five reports. seconds. Which yeah, I, it's like, oh, oh, it's the worst thing ever. Yeah. Oh. Palm out for five seconds. Oh, oh. to the left. Oh, can't recognize can, can you. I make, can I make a broad generalization statement here? I would like to say that anytime somebody invents some crazy new UI mechanism that is slower than just mashing the existing buttons. Then shortcuts so on keyboards. Holding your finger up, holding your hand up for five seconds yes. is a perfect example. It's slower. It requires more mm-hmm. effort. Right. Uh, the face unlock on ice cream sandwich almost certainly is going to be mean, one look, of these. If we're going to if we're going to bring back remotes that you have to well, fucking stand up to use. Well, you can say the same about use. Siri. I think Siri is not a good simple Siri, most Siri of the like time. Connect is better in for some things and exactly. worse for others. Yes, checking weather in other cities, perfect. <laughs> okay, that's a real specific well, use case. Dictating How, a text, fantastic. Yeah. 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 But if we're going to uh, basically like, replacing typing, yeah. If so, we're basically saying that I have to stand up again, which sometimes you do have to do, why don't yeah. you just put let's put the fucking buttons back on the front of the TV? Let's go back in time. Well, but the nice thing about the new interface is you're not is old enough to remember that. I have buttons. He had on, buttons on his TV. T- my the family used to sit around the TV going, "This is this program's crap, isn't it?" Well, yeah, but it, somebody'd have to get up. Someone's got to get up and change. I the channel. had TVs with the old analog, like the you eight, had a knob. L- Did you have a remote control and a knob? You didn't have a knob. I totally had a silver TV with a knob on it. That Did had it have the wood number. paneling? Didn't have wood panel. Ah, oh. I was watching Freaks and Geeks, oh. and there's the thing where like the kid is sitting in front of the channel changer in front of the TV, and the yeah. dad is saying, "Change it, change it, change it." Okay, that's yeah, good. he's like a, f- a first gen remote a, control. It was like, wow, that, that, that's a, it. Took me right back to that time, and it was an amazing little moment of detail. Like, yeah, that's that's how we kids use say it. don't remember an, an antennas. I, re- I remember it, the first sh- the bunny ears. I remember the first remote oh. I ever got on my first VCR. It was a Ferguson Video Star, and it had a fucking cord Oh, on yeah. It. That was the first one I ever saw. When I first time I saw a wireless remote control, like, we went, we spent 20 minutes figuring out, like, was it line of sight? Yeah, Where's the you, sensor? I still do If that. you aim it this way, does it work? <laughs> I'm you, still kind of I, amazed it's in my when pocket. I can, I'm still kind of amazed when I can turn my remote the other way, and it oh, yeah. still work. Well, do you remember the old clicker remotes? The, oh, you yeah. know why the remote is called a clicker, yeah, right? Yeah, it, it would go click. It, like the things that nuns use to tell the kids to sit down and stand up at mass. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Will childhood. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm not Catholic. Oh, okay. I saw yeah. that. From, I learned that from a movie. It was um some movie about about English youth, and they like prep school youth or something, Catholic school youth, and the kid had gotten one of those clackers that the nuns use. That's a child abuse. If movie, you right? had had a Catholic school no. upbringing, though, that would be the final piece of the puzzle. <laughs> that would explain a lot. <laughs> Everything else would lock into place. <laughs> that, that really would explain a lot. But but no. So the kids would. Clack, clack, the clacker that makes the kids stand up and sit right, down right. out of turn. And yeah, the it was got really clicker. pissed off. It really went click. Yeah. This isn't the same clicker that people use to count, right? No, it's a different clicker. Okay. It's, no, a, that's a different it's the thing that's a little piece of uh, stiff metal that when you push down a certain way, it flexes It like flexes against the way it naturally wants to flex, and it makes a clock. That's right. how you train dogs. Kind of, yeah. It's oh. basically a big micro switch. Kind of, yeah, except for there's no electronics. It's oh, just sound. you know, that's what I kind of what I secretly want. I wanted one of those. They still make them. 
those old micro switch keyboards that go clicky click, like real They're tactile yeah, mechanical click. keyboards. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we good. have one in the office. You, Norm, you, you. I use one we, right now. Quick looked at. Yeah. Remember those? Uh, the They're old real IBM loud. Ones that used to weigh like forty pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Made, ones, basically yeah. made out of cast iron. Yeah. Love those. They're great. Good They're all PS2 though. The good ones. But you can you can adapt. There's adapters. Yeah, you can put on a PS2 USB adapter on. It's fine. Um, so yeah, new Xbox Dash. The other thing it adds is channels. This is this is the interesting thing and Bing search. So one of those by itself is not particularly exciting. Both of them together is potentially really interesting. It's great, but I'm very disappointed as a Comcast customer that I don't get my rollout until early next year. For HBO, HBO Go, Go. Well, no, well, for co period. Comcast at all. Well, they're rolling out all the content partners separately. And oh, it's all like December sixth. You get a bunch of stuff, and then late in an early January, I'm sure they're going to do some CES presentation, and then February. And also, in certain regions, HBO Go will not be available because of Comcast right. I actually, on TVs. I don't care about that because I can get HBO Go through my PC now but uh, on the TV. But I'm kind of like I use On Demand on Xfinity a ton. I watch yeah. a ton of TV that way. On Demand is so slow. And, and it's a shitty interface. It, does, yeah. it doesn't work well. I would, I'd love to have that you know, all well, inside the Xbox, but so I'm going to have to wait. I think Verizon Fios is the only, the only people getting it right away, aren't they? Yeah. And I do like ESPN on 360. Uh, it's very neat, but every one of these content partners are going to have their own interfaces. If only they could make American sports something I'm interested in. That would that would be fantastic. There's, there's soccer. There is some on ESPN. Yeah. On the ESPN on 360. There's a lot of stuff. There's college football every every weekday. It's not all the good games. Well, but it's it's the good. It's the it's usually like the ESPN game of the week. And stuff yeah, like so that. it's like they say it's live, but it's like now we are streaming live the recording. That's well, it's usually like a 30-second lag from my informal testing. Hmm. It's great yeah. for people that are into sports, of which there are many. Yeah, and you can watch it like you do, ne like we do Netflix. I want eSports. So we can hang out together at I want eSports. What's eSports? I you want, want, I want to go Starcraft. watch Starcraft. Oh, like Starcraft. I, you know, it's an insult to sports that those things are called sports. What? Oh, no, 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 no. Listen to me. If you want to call it, here's, here's my definition. If you uh, want to call it a sport, oh boy. there has to be some to level of athletic involvement. So golf, golf is a sport. Golf, Curling. you do need physical bowling, bowling. You do bowling, need darts. Like, darts is not a sport. There's competition. Snooker, for it. billiards, pool. Those are not sports. What are they? Wow. Games. Yeah. So highly, you, highly competitive and highly skilled games, but they're not sports. Sports requires some level of athletic involvement, athletic ability. Hmm. If you are hugely fat, and can be good at something, it's not a sport. Sumo wrestling. All right, I'll give you that as the exception. <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll give you Sumo as the exception. Okay. And I guess Babe Ruth was pretty fat, right? Yeah, baseball yeah. players used to be fat too. They're, they're well, still some fat. of them still are. Yeah. So a lot of muscle underneath. I that mean, fat. You, like oh, the and thing I guess, is, and I guess you can. I guess you can be like a three hundred and fifty pound linebacker. Yeah. 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 I mean, the fridge, William Perry. See, the part right, of sports even isn't though those, even, those, even though those guys are very heavy, they're still they're muscle. Still they're trained. still very strong. They're still trained. So you're saying yeah. physical ability. Yes. Physical talent. What if your physical talent is that you have incredibly fast hands? Exactly. Do and 500 actions per minute. Give me an example. StarCraft 2 oh, players. No. 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 <laughs> really? No. You need to make him watch some StarCraft 2 players. Because I didn't think it was a sport either, and then I watched no, these guys No, I get it. Play. I get it. That's very impressive. He's the he, ability to think he, so quickly. Dismissive. This is semantics. Yeah. Like they're, like, they're trying to set up this thing in the UK right now, a new chess... Chess Federation. boxing. They're no, they're called. No, that's bullshit. They're calling. <laughs> oh no, no. That, chess boxing. That that, that, that that by the way is a massive. They have a very good PR department because in fact nobody actually does chess really? boxing. Chess boxing. It's like two but dudes. Because it's that's the kind it? of thing that lazy news departments will cover because it sounds fun and gimmicky. Oh, oh yeah. They made it into a much bigger thing than it really is. That's Ch so disappointing. Chess boxing barely exists, other than the few events they put on just to get the media coverage. Yeah. But there's no real federation. What about horse racing? Um. I mean, the jockeys have to be really strong, so I guess that fits your no, definition. No, they don't. Dude, jockeys have to be strong. Have you ever me. ridden a horse for a, a, a extended period of time? Have you not, ever not ridden not a horse running. at a gallop? No, no. That would be the most terrifying four yeah. seconds of your you, life. You also have to athletic. Last four you also have, to, have to athletic con athletically condition yourself to weigh as little as possible. Well, which and, is why only small people can be jockeys. To and begin with. and you have to be unbelievably strong and have good good instincts. I mean, there's a lot to it. I guess. Yeah, you got to beat what about the shit NASCAR? out of that horse. I guess NASCAR is the same thing. That's a physical endurance thing. See, that's endurance. It's not. Muscles. Rally car driving? That's endurance is a mental That's thing. endurance and mental. I would hesitate to call NASCAR a sport. Oh, there you go. Shit. <laughs> I think that Norman Gary should chess box to settle this once and for all. If you, if you, here's the thing. If you don't have to do, undergo any kind of physical training at all, then I don't think it's a sport. 
I don't mm. think NASCAR drivers really, again, other than other than oh, wanting dude. to keep their body weight down, I don't think they really have to be in any no, kind of it's, physical shape. It ta- it's, it's, you think it's just like put the two fingers on the wheel and put it <laughs> two, 20 degrees left, but it's it's a hard thing. Like it, those cars get really hot. Oh, here comes another slight left stress. turn. Oh my god! I'm, just, I'm constantly just turning. You should do this with a French accent, so you can you can uh, you, you Gerard it up. <laughs> yes, I can be. Uh, what was his name? The guy from uh, Talladega Nights. Yeah, right. Uh, I I saw this. I Jean like Gerard. <laughs> it was shit. <laughs> I love that guy. He's a, it's it's that's my Sasha favorite Baron Sasha Cohen. Baron Cohen character. Yeah, yeah, he was good. Um, yeah. So that's that's my argument there. Wow. Like, so they're trying to recreate. They're trying to rebrand chess as mind sports. Dude, we should have just talked about <laughs> bullshit. Mind, mind bullets and mind sports. Mind oh. sports. We should have just talked about Herman Cain for a while instead of this. You're gonna get so much hate on this. I would love to talk about. I. You know what? I. You know what I would love to do is a political podcast. We can do that. Let's we'll, do let's, one. I'll get a mixer. We'll do it at my house. Let's do it. Or we can oh, just God. do it here. Yeah. It's a oh terrible idea. God. What could we call it? Uh, well, fake outtakes. <laughs> We'll discuss it in fake All outtakes. Right, okay. Because um, I think there'll be, I think people would be interested, but yeah. not not here. everyone. Yeah. No. Yes. Exactly. You got to you got to segregate that. Yes. So right here's platform. Here's uh, so going back to Xbox. Xbox. Maybe not call it sports, but I would like to be able to watch StarCraft and other competitive competitive gaming. games. Yeah. The shit that you're watching in your living room. That ESPN is presented. Right. And that's on Xbox. Really, the perfect medium for it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right on, now your, on your game before, console. Yeah, exactly. Except for is Microsoft going to be really into putting PC games yeah, on their the game console? I don't know. But it, it's, well, they well, win either way. It's Windows yeah, exactly. or Xbox. So who, who knows? Yeah, it's all live. The secret is you need to get Microsoft to sponsor GSL. Yeah, that, once that happen. happens, the whole thing goes downhill. Samsung although any, although anyone, anyone who really Sony believes Erickson. that there's any real connection between games for Windows Live and Xbox Live beyond just the, the branding is fooling themselves. Re- I bought uh, Flight Simulator 10 on games for Windows Live, Xbox Live the other day. Downloaded yeah. it and everything. It was $30. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Um, so the exciting thing about the Dash from a content perspective is search plus video apps. I like the search. Like that that potentially could be really cool because if it can tie five different services together yeah. into yeah. – uh, so I have a, a holistic picture. Of course, there's not going to be an Amazon instant on there. Uh, so some of the services I have access to aren't going to be represented. But that that like search plus apps, like content apps, is the future. That's what Apple TV should be. I'm very excited to see the new Netflix app as well because that's been completely redone. I actually kind of like Netflix the way it is right now. I like it the could Netflix be better, app, but yeah. when they completely redo it, yeah. you never know. You know, they may have thrown some of the baby out with the bathwater. You never know. I went and tried out the PS3 app the other day. I've, I've been using that a little bit. Don't like it. The I PS3 think it's pretty app good. is one of the weaker Netflix apps. I, I, think, I like very it. Good Hulu. They have a very good Hulu app. Yeah. Roku um, is pretty weak for Hulu. Have you used Ro- Oh, for Hulu. I don't use yeah. Hulu, but Roku was great for Netflix. Uh, I, I, I'm fond. Uh, let's talk about the other Xbox rumor this week. Uh, this is uh, s- uh, semi-accurate, which is uh, Charlie, who used to be the Inquirer. And, and pronounce the his last name. Uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I don't who, know what, who are we talking about? Des, Desmogen. All right, whatever. He's, anyway, he usually has a pretty good line into secret happenings at fabs. Like when you see a NVIDIA taped out a new GPU rumor, that's usually Charlie. Okay, so frequently. what's he talking about? So he has said that the first genera- first version of the ne- Xbox Next GPU taped out earlier this week. Uh, and what that means is basically that they made the first prototype on the path toward making... It's essentially like pre-alpha GPU. If you're locked right. in the specs, the next generation, maybe. the next generation Xbox, and maybe something else. I'm talking about the Wii U because we already know about that. But yeah. maybe a new PlayStation. But I think at least a new Xbox is going to get. This is, maybe it sounds like an easy prediction to make, but I think it's going to get very, very real next year. I think uh, we're actually going to see E3. It. E3. Huh? No, E3. E3. I, you don't see it at E3 unless they're going to sell it in time for Christmas, and I don't think they're going to sell it in time for no, Christmas. No, we same with the. Uh, so that's a Nintendo. Yeah, Nintendo, the Wii U. Well, Nintendo's sales had gone off a cliff, so they have nothing to lose. Xbox mean, set, sold a million units. Meanwhile, at, isn't that amazing? Friday. Six years in, they had their strongest sales month at what should be the wane. It's unbelievable. Yeah, who's still buying them? Well, they sold a, a million. It's a ton of Connect bundles. It seems like, and a lot of people don't have them still. That's yeah. that, that's. Inc- like, I'm just so impressed by that. That's amazing. I mean, it's, well done. The Microsoft. games still look great. Wow. The games are the games. The games look are okay. as good. The games are better than they've ever been. Which is why we're all playing Skyrim on PCs in our living room. Well, because that still looks well, better. The games, but on Xbox, right. Ge- the Gears of War three, Uncharted game three. Part. Those games look fantastic. Well, Uncharted three is a PS three. Well, game. I know, but I'm saying, the, I'm saying just generally that generation. Yeah, yeah. This just generation of consoles look fantastic. It's, it's right aged now. well. The, the, and the three sixty in particular. 
I, I would argue that the PS3 has aged a lot 960,000 sales, well, you, six you, years the difference in, is, is incredible. Xbox peaked, not peaked, but got better earlier. Yeah. Well, and Xbox is also the least common denominator. So if, if multi-platform games look more or less the same on both I think platforms. Connect has been an incredible uh, success. And I still don't That's quite... That's surprising. I, I, it, to me, it's also... Because I look at it, I'm like, eh. Who, you, it's you not guys, right. games. The thing that people underestimated... Kids, I think kids love it. Well, parents love it. It's the same thing as Rock Band. Every time I showed a parent that had kids that who's, who, who has kids who were playing video games, playing Call of Duty and Halo and shooting their friends in the face all day, they saw five people sitting around playing Rock Band, having a good time, not shooting anyone. The parents who had any kind of questions about violence in video games immediately were like, hey, uh, what do I need to buy to make this happen all the time? Right. Because I want my kids to do it's, this it's, instead of playing Call not, of Duty. You look at things like Connectables and Disneyland Adventures and the kind of games they're making for Connect and Dance Central... They are they're positive. They're, they're active. They're not violent. And they're, and, and, exactly. Yeah. They are. They involve. They have some active. At least physical, standing physical involvement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not this. And the know? thing is, parents will pony up for that, even if the kids don't want it. The parents are going to give them Dance Central on the off chance that it'll stick. No, I agree. In that regard, it's. I think it's all positive. Like you know, you see that. Um, and that's the, the same Walmart thing. commercial where the parents are kind of in the sweatbands, kind of playing Just oh. Dance, you know, and the kids are like, "What the fuck?" Um, and that's the same thing that Microsoft. Uh, I mean, that the Nintendo tapped into with the original with the Wii. I mean, if you if you look at Wii Sports, all those ads with the with the happy retirees bowling were well, designed to hey, look, you can be off of the couch play not you're playing video games but not playing video well, games. Here's the and thing, now those retirees can have companions on Xbox. Here's, here's yeah, the, the thing though, cuz that's kind of where Connect is in the life cycle right now, right? Is that it's still very fresh and fun and we love talking about people getting up and playing games together. How many Connect games have you played though so far? Uh, I don't know, a small handful. I played the Gunstringer, I and played, I played uh, Dance, Dance Central and Dance, Dance Central, Central 2. Um, what else have I played with Connect? I can't remember now. I don't have that. Child Connect, of Eden. Connect Adventures. Child of Eden, which is actually one of my favorite games of this year. Thank you for reminding me. You're welcome. It didn't. Um, the Connect version of that was worse than the GamePad version, though, I wrong. thought. Connect version is what makes Still it Still don't own a Connect. I, I, maybe, uh, my room is not good for Connect. You can get uh, Child of Eden for like 20 bucks now. you got to get it. It's, it's a really good game. Is Beautiful. there any game right now that allows someone to play traditionally with a gamepad? Like, kind of like Super Mario on, on Wii where you have two player, but the second player just assists. Not required. Mm. Where one player plays with the gamepad and Xbox and then a second player I think you're going to see more hybrid stuff like yeah. that. I want to see hybrid stuff. Maybe not necessarily one person. Do you see the same living room thing? Do you see that Skyrim on PC is working with Kinect now? Really? How yeah. does that work? I think you can do magic spells and shit with your oh, hands. Oh, man. I want to cast <laughs> magic spells with my hands. Yeah, well, you should look into it. Um, Natural Missile in the Darkness. Yeah. Now all they need to do is make a PS3 Are version. Girls not there? completely fucked. Yeah, I heard that was bad. You know what annoys me? What annoys? Uh, I don't. I bet, I bet we're about to find out. Well, yeah. How long have you got? Um, but since we're talking about Skyrim, Skyrim is obviously a fantastic game. I personally, I, again, it's not a difficult prediction, but I think it's going to sweep the board at all the Game of the Year awards. You played Saints um, Row yet? No, that's next up. I don't have the time to play games all day like some of you people. Wait, why are you looking? You, 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 of all the people in this room, you have the time to play I, games all day. I didn't know. I didn't name anyone. How many hours did you I put into, some of you into Need for like Speed Most Wanted? Out there who do play? Well, that's their job. I put, I, not Most Wanted, Hot Pursuit too. Hot Pursuit I, put, too. I did put quite a few hours into that. Um, it annoys me immensely that multi-format developers like Bethesda still seemingly treat PS3 users like second-class as citizens. The get, as the ghetto. I think that's disgusting. Yeah. Why, 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 why should they have to put up with a version that is just flat broken? I how, did the, how the fuck did that get through QI? It's unacceptable. In fairness, I don't think that... Um, well, Bethesda has a pretty good reputation for shipping really f- broken-ass games. Like, just the fact that Skyrim it's, wasn't broken-ass on Xbox and, and PC is probably, like, a moral victory. I know, but it was more broken on PS3, just like... What the, exactly is the problem with it? I, I know I've heard people once, talking about it, but I don't once know you get, Once you get about 40 hours in, the frame rate become, turns into a slideshow. Oh, because the save, mm-hmm. when the save file gets big, the frame rate goes down. Yeah, that is, and I'm sure like they mistake. can fix it, but it's unacceptable that it launched in that condition. And apparently Bethesda has a history of doing this with PS3 titles. It's not, it's not acceptable. Well, well the, Valve used to too, and then they kind of did a 180 with Portal 2. Well, and, well Val, I mean, Valve were like openly hostile towards the PS3 for yeah. a long time. They've embraced it now, but for a while, though, they just weren't interested. But they embraced it because they were able to bypass the QA process. So part of the deal with Steam is that they're, 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 Sony trusts them to QA their patches so that they d- d- dole them out via Steam. Right. Anyway, kind of a tangent. Um, but going back to Connect, Bethesda broke the game for everybody. 
I mean, the resistances right now just don't work in that game. So that's the thing. I'm not well, part of the reason why I haven't even jumped in yet is the, like, the most recent patch apparently fucks it up. Yeah, Bethesda's. Are, I mean, they make amazing games, but they they seem to be their own worst enemy. Well, it's really. Com- I mean, it's a high it's a high level of complexity in those games. I mean, yeah, Skyrim is. Like, I mean, just I picked up the uh, strategy guide at Target the other day. It's like a fucking phone book. Yeah. So like, you you bought it or you just, no, I just literally looked at it. okay. Yeah, you don't need a oh, strategy uh, guide for that game. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. What's to know? Yeah, just just follow the dots. Walk toward the dots on the map. Okay, sounds good. Get stabby. Um, you should really play Saints Row. That's I've, next. As soon as I, I've got one more level to do in Modern Warfare Three, Saints Row you're is up still next. on the last. Map? I haven't had time He's to been finish working. it. Okay, okay. Gary's gone all Hollywood again. Um, so yeah, Xbox GPU taping out. That lends credence to a mid twenty thirteen launch. So that means we'll probably start hearing about hardware next year at GDC. We'll see those big gnarly dev kits again. Um, and it, it seems like it's an AMD GPU, uh, and and chances are that means it's going to be a PowerPC architecture. So it'll be as the PS3 was a PS2 plus. You think PowerPC? That's what that's what people are I saying. I thought people were saying AMD. I've heard both. X86. Yeah, some people are saying that it might be system on a chip. Some people are saying it's PowerPC. Who knows? Uh, but probably mid 2013 launch. I think mid 2013. I think a springtime launch for a console makes. Well, a Xbox sense. still has one good year. 360 has one at least good year of sales. And do you think the existing, the current generation of Kinect will just kind of leapfrog over I into think, the next generation? I think that it'll be a new, higher resolution. The Kinect. Next. So I'll. To- I'll I, I, I'm wondering if I'm going to toss my 360 away, yeah, bring in Kinect. this new thing, and just plug the existing Kinect into it, and, M- and, and that, and it kind of like becomes crop pan generation. Well, I don't know if that's going to be the case. So Microsoft has been talking about a up version of Kinect for PC in, in like industrial and scientific uses. We talked about this, I think, while you were gone on the podcast. Mm-hmm. But basically, the things I've been hearing are rumors of a more higher fidelity Kinect for like, right, like a Kinect, uh, for like doctors Kinect who want to be able to run imagery without having yeah, to like touch they did stuff with Wii like Plus, yeah. Exactly. Um, so instead of having a wider, uh, a tighter grid of dots, basically on right. the on the screen, which frankly they need, because again, what part of the problem with Connect is it is a bit woolly, you know, and also faster processing, yeah, uh, faster uh, recognition uh, on hand, on board. Yeah. Like if they knew that they were going to sell as many units as they were, and the number of games that they're going to sell attached to these things, they probably would have put more hardware in that. that I'm, Kinect I'm box. G- you know, seeing that now that they're able to look at the numbers and go, wait, we actually have a hit on our hands. This isn't just like a shot in the dark anymore. I'm sure that the Connect division at Microsoft is very, very busy working on how to keep this thing going through the next generation. So. Yeah, um, and and fostering some really amazing titles both for this generation and next, so that people are, remain excited about it. Because I mean, right now, if you look at the titles that people are stoked about, it's literally the Dance Central games and the the gaming nerds like us are into Gunstringer and stuff like that. But normals, there's not a whole lot. Yeah, of the really games, games the casual it. games. I still think it's got a bit of a, a, a bit of that. We, I, I, I really worry. Mini game they, collection. They, they need, yeah, they need to. And Tim Schafer's working on one that I'm sure will be very good. But they need to make sure that they don't go down the path that the yeah. Wii did, where well, it's just all shovelware. Because I, th- I feel like a little bit of that stink is already starting to come off the Kinect. That thing that Tim Schafer's working on is just like it's not even a mini game collection. It's just random weird party shit. It's the floor is made of lava. The yeah, video and that's game. and that's fun. But I'm, I'm in. But I'm, I'm in. And that's fun. But the clear. problem is that's what the Wii became overall. Yeah. It's just nothing but but garbage games. like that. Mini games and first party. If hardware is taping out right now for the next Xbox, yeah, uh, it means that dev kits will probably be out S- soon GDC after. GDC time frame, I would uh, assume. Maybe, maybe for launch titles, do you think probably. next generation is going to have simultaneous or cross platform for 360 and whatever the next Xbox is, or they'll go dedicated next Xbox? It'll be, I, I assume it'll be like last generation where you you could, there were crappier. There are first party games that are next generation exclusive. Uh, there are third party games that are up resed versions of or PC, essentially PC versions, right? Yeah. Of current previous generation games. Because you look at franchises now and. Yeah. We've had the trilogies. Yeah. I mean, a trilogy is perfect for one generation. We've of run console. out exactly. So the next gears or whatever would make yeah. sense to launch on the next gen t- yeah. console only. Yeah, and it's going to be all spiral gears, no no cogs. I don't know. Um, so that's it for news this week. Oh, Kindle usability findings. Yeah, so, I, didn't, I didn't read the story. What's this about? It's website useit.com did some tests. I think did it and and studied how people were using the Kindle Fire. Basically, their conclusions were that seven inch tablet, uh, it, it's good form factor for mobile sites and actually better than on smartphones. But also the button design stuff on the Kindle just sucks. People are not, it's not, bad. Not finding the Kindle Fire easy to use overall. 
Yeah, no home button. It's the same thing we said in the first day. But also, but the, the, so the on-screen buttons are just too small. Yeah, it's, 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 it's not very friendly. UI should have been redesigned. Um, it I, should have been thought out more. I'm, uh, they dumped a patch out the other day, so I'm going to spend more time with it and then rewrite probably the stuff that I had written already to see, uh, see how it stacks up to the uh, Nook tablet, basically. Hopefully that'll be up next week, although with me being out Thursday and Friday, I don't know if that'll happen now, but we'll do what we can. Um, and that'll do it for news. Let's uh, let's play some music and go over to what we've been testing. So the Nokia Lumia is here. It uh, just just first impressions. Mine. It's mine. Would you switch? Give me your iPhone. You can have it. Hmm. your heart doesn't tell, <laughs> want to do it, right? Get, hand, just you, hand me the you, iPhone. Your heart can't bear to switch. The no, iPhone is in his is his right hand, and the Lumia is in his left hand. Make your Sophie's choice. And he and he's which child do you want to kill? Actually, FMK. What I'm, I'm going to do is take the bumper off this, yeah, okay, and just actually do like a dual wielding. They feel almost exactly the same way. They feel the same, but the you Lumia know what? I actually prefer heavier. the the contoured edges of the Nokia. Feels good. Yeah. Curves are fun. It's a Curves beautiful. It's a beautiful bit in terms of this is the first non iPhone phone i've held and seen and used that i think has absolutely just pristine beautiful build quality well it, it feels like I, metal it feels it has it's, it's polycarbonate but feels like brush the metal weight, yeah. the heft the feel it just feels well built it doesn't feel plasticky like the focus or any of that yep. a lot of the android phones that i like see. that it has no external connectors except for a headphone jack i think yeah. that's pretty hot Wait, really yeah. Yeah. No way. The, you have to move a little cover to yeah, get the exactly. micro USB. Well, those, yeah. those are, we've already seen that those easily bend and break. Yes. Uh, that's, not a, that's not a great right. part. It's not a great design, but, it, but I it like the way it pops kind up. Of, that kind of unibody, you know, it's all one piece of plastic down under here. Yeah. You know, there's no parts where it, you know, comes together. It and feels looks nice in the hand. It's not as flat as I thought it'd be. I was expecting thinner. Yeah. I so, love it. So, like... Like well, hand me your uh, iPhone. You can use it two weeks. We have two weeks with it. Well, you, I can't put a SIM card in it, though. You have to do a quick look of it, though. Mm. No. Sorry. Okay. So, so you're saying you can't commit to uh, a Nokia-based lifestyle? Swedish phones or Finnish phones are out. Um, uh, so we'll we'll do a quick look of that. Um, Norm's out tomorrow, so we probably will. I'm gonna spend time with it. We'll post it on Monday, I would guess, uh, before we actually do the quick look because I don't think we 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 should rush into this. Do you think? I'm just going to ask you the big picture question. Yeah. Do you think that Windows Phone 7 and Nokia and this whole... I mean, is Windows, do you think Windows Phone 7 is going to make a real... Do you think it has a it? chance? Yes. Do you yes. think it has a chance? Okay, good. I think we are early enough in this whole process. Like I said, we're re- literally at the point now where the first wave of people who bought Android phones... Like, not the people who bought the G1 from on T-Mobile, the, the, the developers... But the people who bought the Droid and the and the Nexus One and the HTC Incredible, those people are all coming off of contract now, and they have to make a decision. Do they like Android enough that they're going to stay with it? They're going to try iOS, or they're going to go for for a Windows Phone uh, or something else, BlackBerry, whatever other options are all right there. I, I think those people are making those decisions, and because the attach rate for apps to Android phones is less, paid apps to Android phones is way lower than it is on iOS. There's a lot less. Uh, keeping them on that platform. I've, so, said, I've said before, I'm very excited when, when Nokia and Microsoft came together because I think that's what they were missing was like a, a, you know, a flagship hardware partner. And so yeah, it's absolutely. exciting to be able to hold the, the fruits of that in, in the hand. This, though, this, we're still waiting to find out when a U.S. version of this is going to... I don't think that we're going to see a U.S. Right. version of this ever. Well, not exactly that, but something very much like I it, I think right? we're going to see a new... Well, this is essentially a Nokia N9 body. It's a little bit different design, a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, a little bit smaller screen. I think I can't remember specifics. But I, I think we're going to see a updated body style. This is out, what, in Europe? In Europe right now. Okay. Iterated version. Uh, I, think, I think we'll see... Better. I think we'll see the iPhone 4 to the iPhone 3GS on this. I think we'll see a thinner, smaller, maybe a slightly bigger screen. I love, I love the dedicated camera button so that when, I, when this is on, I just turn it, press the camera button. That, that turns on the camera That's a app. Windows Phone feature. Right, and then you use the camera button yeah. to – that's great. I love that feature. It's fantastic. I, I'm really interested to see uh, – Nokia uses Zeiss Optics, which I don't know that that matters on a quarter-inch lens, but I'm interested to see how that works. Um, th- there's a lot of stuff, good stuff going on here. And this is the first, I mean, some of those other phones are good. The focus I, I like, some of the other phones are okay. It, they just all feel a little shoddy and you don't get that feeling from this phone, which is a refreshing change. So you don't, so you don't think we'll necessarily see anything like this. In the, I mean, the Microsoft, Microsoft Nokia 
phones yeah. are coming to the US. We just yes. don't know if they're going to look anything like they're, this. They're going to launch at CES or CTA in the spring. And I, I think that this is a stopgap designed to get something out quickly before the holiday season for the European market. Right. And I think they're going to launch in the US with a massive marketing push in the early yes. year. Yes, and if they're smart, it will be with a phone that looks and feels something like this. Ma- that makes that look very, like a pile of crap. Very compelling. I think that they're going to make something that makes that feel old and unsexy. Really? That's my I hope so. Good for them. I, I want to see that, that phone. Um, so let's see. Other Are you going to do a quick look on this? Monday. Yeah. Okay. Per our earlier conversation. But you still don't have a Galaxy Nexus. Don't have one of those yet. They were 750 bucks off contract. And I, I, I'm kind of hoping that they're going to release a GSM version because it's a kind of a pain in the ass for us to test Verizon phones right now. Um, but yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do something mm-hmm. with the Galaxy Nexus. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Jawbone up. Norm's, Norm's wearing that right now. Still wearing it. Would yeah. you have a quick look at that? Do you like it? Uh, is it dreamy? Yeah. It's not dreamy, but... Quick Look's on the site right now. Yeah, it, you know, I feel like the thing it does is that it's a, a reminder for me to walk more. Do you like it as a as a fashion accessory? Not really. I have no comments. But yeah. I feel like it adds anything to your, no. to your brand. No girls have walked up to you and no. been like, hey, what's that, what's that yeah. cool I would swap this thing. out for a nice watch. doesn't add anything to the Would you wear brand. a watch? Why don't uh, you depends. wear a watch? Because I have a phone. I know, but you seem like someone who likes you know to make a fashion statement. And a I haven't found the right nice one. way to do that. Have You're rocking the, right the G-Shock. One. Yeah. No, I, I want a nice... Cl- see, I can't decide between metal or uh, leather band. Gotta, leather, I think. I leather bands are better. You know, the problem with, uh, with those metal bands is that they're a hassle to adjust, and mm-hmm. they never... They change. They contract and expand as yeah. you're you know, in the heat. So sometimes they're too loose. Sometimes they're too tight. You know, I made a list yesterday. I tweeted something about uh, s- some possible quests that might happen in 2012. I think watch quests will have to be part of that. I think, I, I, I think uh, that would be a fascinating quest. What is, what's that page? So, you're so at the idea there? of quests, like as opposed to roundups, quests are some things I actually want to buy. So it's personal purchases. Personal purchases. That's why TV quests was such a big deal last year. Next See, year. The, I, other, the yeah. other thing you can do, by the way, you don't have to commit to just one. I mean, watches, you can get a nice watch. This pretty is cheap. true. Can, I mean, I've got like five watches. Well, because I'm I, I don't like to wear jewelry. Dude. I don't like to, well. It's not that I'm classy, I, and none of them are really that expensive. I just I don't like to wear jewelry, yeah. but I am a sucker for a for a nice watch. Mm. And you know, different watches fit different occasions. Peter runs a watch guy. He is. Yeah, he has many watches. He has yeah. a, he, he likes. Bold. He has, a, is that he has really a bold watches. Is that the Omega right there? This is the Omega oh. Speedmaster. That's like the three thousand dollar watch. I have a dream that one day. It's a beautiful watch. One day, it's it's the it's a chronograph. So it's a uh, timepiece. It has a stopwatch. It's the watch that the Apollo astronauts used. Yeah, but you're not buying it. And James it, Bond. You're not buying it for any of those reasons other than it looks I'm fantastic. I'm buying it because it's and it, super and it, and it, and it makes cool. a statement. Yeah. It says that I don't mind winding my watch every day because I want something that's totally rad. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you're not a dude who wears Rolex. I'm not going to wear a Rolex. When you're, when, you're wear, when you're wearing something like that, though, what you're really saying is I am the 1%, which maybe these days. That's true. Well, I mean, it could have been a family heirloom. Yeah, not maybe my looks, dad. Not was, maybe looks, my not grandfather looks, was an astronaut. Not if it looks brand new. Maybe my grandfather. I wouldn't buy a new one. I'd buy a used one. Probably. Watch Quest, two thousand twelve. I don't. I, it would be hard. Even buying a used fifteen hundred dollar watch seems insane. Yeah, I think Watch Quest could be very interesting, yeah. and it's technology. It's all yeah, site related. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I find watches. Uh, it's personal Watch Quest. I just. Yeah, I'm not interested in watches. No, I, I mean, I, I would. would I would love to have a rad, super rad, cool watch, but I, I, I would feel weird wearing it. I, I also saw that you were talking about DSLR Quest. Yeah, that's Are you not sure. the Sony? Uh, I, 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 I just bought that this morning. Oh, oh you, you bought, bought the one? Micro Four Thirds? Or, or order the uh, Nex C3 this morning. Oh, good for you. And, and how much uh, is that? $600. I got it uh, slightly cheaper. And what does that come with lens-wise? Just, uh, it's a 15, uh, 1855 millimeter lens. The zoom? So I got the zoom. Okay. Now, do you really need a full-on DSLR on top of that? I do. Why? Because the SLR is what I want to shoot video with, and I'm not going to shoot video with this. So are you going to buy like a, a low-profile lens that makes that makes that camera more pocketable? No, nah, I think I'm going to stick that one because I, I need it for work, and, and it's going to be my CS camera. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, I, do like that. I do like that Sony one. It's a nice camera. You can put that on like a speed sling too, so it's just like, you know, I'm always handy. I'm not going to wear a sling with that. DSLR, you can wear a sling. You're going um, to like Peter Parker. No, uh, no, uh, no. Jimmy you, Olsen. J- Jimmy Olsen well, and Parker. Parker. They, were both, they, were yeah, both exactly. they were both photographers. No, yeah, yeah, Peter Parker's more of a more of a Leica dude. Or Peter, Peter Parker had like cheap cameras. He just had like the right opportunities because he was also he's also Spider Man. Yeah. Oh my Jimmy god! Olsen. Spoilers. Yeah, I know. Jimmy Olsen's the dude that's a real photographer. He's a photojournalist. Um, he had to stalk Superman. The seven D. I think I'm waiting for seven D yeah, Mark II. You're talking real money, aren't you? That's that? like fifteen hundred just for the body. 
and lenses are you know can can go up to two thousand dollars. You see that uh, uh, the Think Geek uh, coffee mug now that looks like a DSLR I ha- lens. I think I have one of those at, uh, yeah. in my house. Uh, the seventy shoots really good video. It's not full frame, but I watched a movie this weekend um, that a uh, Anton Yelchin movie, uh, Like Crazy, mm. shot on seven D. I heard it was good. Oh, that's good interesting. Good movie, and the whole thing shot on seven D. Yeah. Well, what? Hold on, wasn't. Uh, there, was network 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 there was an episode was of House that was shot on a 5D. Yeah. Uh, Social Network, I was think, shot was on shot on Reds? Uh, no, I think it was shot on the Venom. Oh, or one okay. of those. It was definitely shot di- high end digital. Yeah. Okay. So there are a couple high end digitals, right? Red uh, has theirs, the Scarlet and stuff. And then uh, Canon announced their uh, C300s um, a month ago. And people have been loving those, uh, the, the early testers and the early like photographers who've gotten access to those. You know, Sony has their A77, which shoots video, um, and that's more of a consumer prosumer line. Uh, but I'm more interested in the, the full DSLR because there's a lot of cool accessories you can get with that. Yeah, video. of course. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, I tested those 3D goggles last week, the View 6 Wrap 1200 VR. Uh, so it's two screens independent in a headset. You remember the 90s. You remember VR? It's that. God. Yeah. Slightly higher resolution. No, never, never, never. Remember going to like the laser tag places and then in the lobby they would have the VR stations? No. I grew up in a poor part of the country. Where I, mean, I, re- I remember, I remember Virtuality. VR. Remember that company and they had the big, uh, the, yeah. the big arcade yeah. rigs that you would get in? Shit. Just shit. Yeah. This is pretty much the same if you, thing. If you, wanted to, if you wanted to feel like you were walking around inside a 1980s Dire Straits video... That was the technology. I don't really have. like Dire Straits. What? They had, I know. They had the ones with like the treadmill and stuff. Like you, you walk on and then not English. the gamepad. And too young. You don't have to be English. Do you like the Beatles? I like the Beatles. They're also English. They transcend <laughs> country. Do you like Norm, do you like Dire Straits? Money for nothing, kicks for free. Chicks for yeah. free, kicks for free. And chicks. Uh, chicks. Sure, why not? Okay. You're just avoiding conflict yeah. now. Um... Yeah, uh, I, I, those, VR. The, so those Today. VR glasses were kind of cool, and I, that's why I bought Flight Sim for. Uh, you could do the virtual cockpit thing and like look around at the cockpit, but the resolution on the screens isn't high enough that you could actually read the instruments, which made the whole thing kind of masturbatory and useless. It's not the technology is not there. Um, they're saying 720p screens next year. Well, they have 720p ones in the Sony. Yes, they're those are OLEDs. Right, and those are like 200 bucks more. Than these. Yeah, they're 800 bucks. When the they thing. can do that in a way that the, mo- the the head tracking is completely fluid and seamless, and, and there's no the bleed. Retru- yeah. Yeah. That then, they'll, but it's not Plus, ready yet. I, no matter what, even with the Sony ones, like even if it's 720p or even higher resolution, it still looks like you're looking at a screen. It's not your entire vision. It's right. Just it needs to be like yeah. this. And if you, what they can do is they can have, you know, they can blow that up, but because you don't need really to move your eyes, you're moving your head, they can have less resolution on the edges and make it blurrier. Yeah. Like Absolutely your peripheral true. vision yeah. and just have high density of pixels in the, in the center. Yes. All of these things are true. Um, you see those glasses uh, that you invented that can now undo 3D movies. They're now commercially for sale. That's they they went on sale a while. I think he's been selling them for like six yeah. or eight months. Yeah, they didn't credit us though. It was a little sad. You could have made money off that. Yeah, I'd rather. I you know that's the kind of thing I'd open, rather open give to a the people for free. And uh, and, and convert yeah, 3D I'm not, lenses, I'm not uh, open a 3D glasses, uh, I, 3D glasses. I, I'm just glad that people can be freed from the tyranny of 3D glasses. Although I'm hearing that Hugo in 3D is pretty good. I kind of want to go see that. If I was in town this weekend, it's probably something I would do, but I'm not going to be around. I'm going to get get to it eventually. Why don't we go next week after work sometime? Uh, Let's see how it goes. Okay. (laughs) Fine, then. When is uh, Mission Impossible? Mission Impossible. That's the next thing I'm going to see. Oh, is that Christmas time? I think that's next week, actually. Uh, Next week or week. So I leave for Christmas the Monday after next. Where are you going? Tennessee. Okay. Same place I go every year. Um, There's a Christmas, Elvis Christmas song that uh, talks about Tennessee. Blue Christmas? No, it's... Hawaiian um, Christmas? Tennessee Christmas? Uh, Christmas it's called I'll Be Home on Christmas Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, he's from Memphis. From the hills of Georgia to the plains of Tennessee. Yeah. Yes. Elvis Christmas songs were generally not very good, in my experience. What? Fuck, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> just... just <laughs> Uh, just move. Just let's just move you know on. Uh, the user threatened to make a soundboard for the when Elvis you're not Christmas here, album and is the only button fantastic. On it, the only button on the Gary Witta soundboard would have been that. Why Fuck though? off. Why though? It's a tiny, tiny fraction percentage of of, of what I actually I know, say. I know. It's it's just. It, but it's it's everyone's got to have their catchphrase. One of the tools in your in your. The problem is it can never really catch on in the mainstream. That's well. It's the same thing as the as the my meme generator. It doesn't get indexed, so normals don't ever see that. Yeah, because of the cum face. 
I've, I have been testing crazy band-aids. So I cut myself on Thanksgiving. And what is that, I, a tradition? No, it, like it, just so I can feel anything. Penitence, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just wanted to feel something. <laughs> no, so <laughs> cutting is a serious problem, guys. We shouldn't make fun of this. No, it's, that's uh, true. It's, it, it plagues teenagers everywhere. Uh, I cut myself with a vegetable peeler. I'm very good with knife safety, but I whiffed on the vegetable peeler yeah. while peeling potatoes and cut the top of my finger off. Ouch. And uh, bumped into, we went to see the Muppets the next day. Mm -hmm. oh. And we bumped into Dan Stapleton and his wife, who is a medical doctor. Yes. Uh, not the kind Dan of doctor Stapleton, that helps people. But his wife, yeah, the kind of doctor that helps people. And uh, she gave me a pro tip, which is Band-Aid Active Flex Band-Aids, which are not cloth. They're not latex. They're just like this weird plastic, stretchy plastic stuff. And then instead of having like a cotton pad in there, there's this gel. Oh. And what the gel does is has antibiotics and all sorts of other shit that makes you heal faster. And it keeps the wound moist. You know, the tip of your finger is the hardest place, the Band-Aid. Yeah, because you, like, you go over the nail or do you yeah, go over the sides? It's tough and to wrap around. It's, it's, there's special the Band-Aids for that. The one is when you cut yourself shaving oh. and you cut yourself right under the nostril there, nick yeah. yourself. That's or the tough. lip, the corner well, of the lip. Because you can't put the little piece of paper there because just the act of breathing through your nose will always knock it away. Styptic pen, dude. But what you can get, I got a little. I got the Band-Aid liquid bandages where it's like this little liquid ah, that you put on the end of a Q-tip. And you put it there, and it and it creates like a it hardens, becomes a seal, and it creates a little band. Wow. See, that wouldn't have worked for it's what like I was super doing. It's like superglue. I was for thinking, kinda, kinda. This this so bled. people have used super glue to seal. Uh, yeah. We can was, do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, this bled for like two days, so it was kind of gnarly. Uh, and I, I like had there been anything to stitch, I probably would have gone and gotten stitches, but there was no skin left. The uh. it healed and like <laughs> it healed. It's it's better. It's amazing. So good like a good week. Good for Band-Aid. Yeah. Are there fancy designs? Can I get SpongeBob you on it? You cannot get Mickey Mouse. Ah. But they're crazy expensive. I didn't look at how much they cost when I bought the first pack. They're a buck a piece. Wow. Yeah. I think it's amazing that they that they can they did all that and that uh, do they know it's Christmas, you know, raising all that money for those children in Africa. It's oh, really? Oh, Band-Aid? Yeah. I didn't know that. So Johnson & Johnson, huh? From good minds come good products? I don't know. Uh, Gary, you went back on something. We should get an egg ready for you, too. You bought a 3DS. I did. Despite handheld gaming being dead. I did. How's that going for you? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't taken it out of the box yet. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the tweets. You were so excited. I was very excited. Well, I, I, I've had almost no interest in the 3DS since launch. I thought it was kind of a silly product. Mario Kart did it, didn't it? No. Mario no. Land? Uh, Mario Land and Zelda. Oh. Because what I got was the special edition Zelda bundle, which is this beautiful black 3DS that has like the Zelda... Um, it has a like Triforce. A well, not a tri. I, I mean, your Triforce in there somewhere. But it just has this beautiful kind of gild, gilding around it. The design of it just made it look really, really nice. And uh, as luck would have, I was at the mall and I was thinking I should. I, I'm feeling like just treating myself to something nice for Christmas, like a complete luxury product. Yeah, something and, that is mostly useless. But something that is, you know, has four hours of battery. Some, yeah, something that's all you know, not crazy money, but like something I could buy for myself, like something kind of relatively high end. And uh, I saw it. And I said, like, Oh, I didn't even know they. I remember when I saw it. Uh, on the internet, I was like, oh, wow, I think that's only in Japan or Europe, but like it looked really nice. And then I found out it was in the US. So I got that. Comes with Ocarina of Time 3D. And it also comes with, uh, well, I didn't come with it, but I also got some Mario 3, 3D Land because I've heard nothing but good things about that. I, even if I use it only to, to play those two games, and I'll probably get Mario Kart as well, I'll probably be happy. Um, but I do worry a little bit that I bought into the technology too early, that, you know, I do hear these problems with the battery life and the 3D is. Well, I, I'm going to headache after a while as somebody who bought the Mario Kart DS, the red one, I, I kind of regretted it because everybody knew immediately that I had a red ass red DS and that it was the Mario Kart one. Right. So now you What's have one that, that I, yeah, nothing wrong with that. It was just real red. The people who buy like I know, want gold, that, yeah. you know, Wii controllers and That's stuff true. for Zelda. That is, that is true. Okay. Um, so, have, so well, I bought it. So, I have so nothing to report. No, nothing. To, again, I haven't had time. It's sitting there. Uh, I'm sure I'll play it over Christmas. And I played some Mario Kart with Ryan and those guys when they were testing that. Mario Kart Seven. Mario Kart Seven. How do you Pretty, like it? Uh, I mean, I played like three it's rounds. It's been getting great reviews. It's neat that uh, it's neat that you can uh, share the game across multiple DSs with one cart. Although oh, they punish good. they punish the moochers by only letting them be shy guy. 
right. which is the shittiest of Mario Kart characters. That's I fair think. enough. So, I mean, you're kind of crippled if you like to be a yeah, Bowser but I think or that's a good but compromise. A, you can play it, but if you want the full experience, get your own game. Yeah, there you go. And and the stuff that they limited is pretty minor. I think I think the 3DS, I think it'll probably take one more revolution of the technology, but I think the 3DS will find uh, you know a place for itself. Agreed. Uh, Vita remains to be seen. Well, I mean, it's always we'll see next spring, right, for Vita. Hmm. Uh, the last thing I have been testing is that I, I wiped my eye. So when we when I set up my iPhone 4S, I did the thing that I've told everybody not to do and just uh, pulled my back up from the 4. Because we were doing worked, it during the... To we be did fair, it, it has worked for some people. We did it during Octobercast. It okay. works for me. Uh, but I realized I'm having trouble going from one song to the next. And I thought it was an audio problem. But then it turns out it was an iMusic. It was happening in iMusic too. So like you'll you'll say play an album and it'll play the first song and then it wouldn't play the second song. So I uh, I wiped the phone completely and the restore process this go round because there's a full list of all the apps that I bought and I was able to just scroll through that and tap the ones that I wanted to reinstall. I was able to pull my music from my iCloud, um, uh, all my settings and stuff for the apps. Once I installed them, were back restored from from uh, from. Oh, I guess that didn't work. I guess I had to put that back in manually. But regardless, it was a really painless process. It was much, much easier than it has been in the past. Uh, I haven't used it enough to know if there was any kind of impact. I'm probably going to switch to the Lumia as soon as we finish this podcast. So I don't know that I'll know. But uh, I was like, it, it wasn't the 12 hour. I didn't ever connect it to iTunes, which feels weird. I'm going to at some point to pull ringtones and stuff that it I've does made feel weird, over. But also yeah. good. It's nice. It's a good. It's a good. And you weird. know what? iTunes match. Yeah. I signed up for that. Yeah. Now I don't have to connect to my phone to iTunes to get music. Yeah. No. Thing. It's ama- That's amazing. Yes. Worth twenty five bucks. I can that. do it on the on the. Of course, I've been using audio for music lately. Well, I have yeah Spotify. <clears throat> you have Spotify. I'm using Spotify and iTunes Match now. Yeah. I'm, I'm using iTunes Match, but I don't have it turned on on the phone right now because there are a few things that I find annoying. Well, you don't have to play. Every, you don't have to download everything. Well, I like no, having, but like if I sync music to the phone, I've got to remember to also download it. No, you can't sync and match it. Well, that's so. That's the thing is that everything is on their iCloud, but I've got to yeah. remember to download everything from the phone before yes. I leave the house. Otherwise, but you can download it'll it off do it over 3G. 3G. Yeah, but so, I'm fucking up my 3G data. Oh yeah, that? he doesn't oh, have unlimited data. That's right. Okay. Oh man. But you've oh, this Verizon yeah, yeah. switch might have been a mistake. No, it's fantastic. I'm sure. See, what I use Match does is it lets me. It shows me my entire library on my phone, and I can just download slash stream the songs that I want to listen to, so, so I know. I get a better sense of what I'm actually listening to. I'm going to tell you the problem with that. Uh, on RDO, the thing that they do is they let you switch between stuff that's saved on the phone and stuff that's, that's available in your collection in the cloud mm-hmm. uh, in the app. On iTunes, on iTunes on the phone in order to do that, or music on the phone in order to do that, you have to go all the way back out to the settings app and toggle it, yeah. which is really frustrating when you're standing right. in the BART station where you have no signal really? and you want to know what is on the phone and what's in the cloud. Because you don't want to start downloading something when you're going to get on the train and drop and have a half-downloaded song. There should be an icon next there, to it. There should be. There yes. is an icon next there to is, songs. But I have t- 30,000 songs, 25,000 songs in my library, and I have 10 albums on my phone. Okay, so you want to be able to sort I and just see what's on. I want to be able to just see what's on the phone. I don't, I do don't that think way. they let you I, do. I just listen to music you know, that I want to listen to. This is to. a very specialized use case, but it is something that impacts me every single day. Well, in that case, you use audio. That's why you use. Both. That's why I continue using audio. Yeah. I think I'm going to kill. I don't know. I might kill audio. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to play some music, and then we should answer some questions. Anything else we've been testing? We want to talk about before I do that, though. We good? Norm, you're back on a case. Gary, you're back on a case. I'm caseless these days for the iPhone. I'm Just, thinking about going caseless. Yeah, take it as off. You, as you can see, it's off more now. Yeah. yeah. In take my, take in my, it all off. You know, you have that. It's like when you get like brand new shoes or whatever. Your you know, you want your new car, whatever it is. Like you want to keep it like pristine for a, in that initial period. But after a while, you just become ah fuck it, and the case comes off. Oh, a couple a couple other things we were testing. The two Kindle lighted covers. One of them's here. The other one's coming. Uh, we'll do both of those for the seventy nine dollar one and for the touch. Uh, the TLDR for my Kindle thing is going to be that the seventy nine dollar one is my favorite. I, I've used the touch at this point. I've used the fire enough at this point. Unless something dramatically changes with the fire, the one with buttons is better. If they'd put buttons on the touch, it would be perfect because mm-hmm. uh, well, having the option is really so good. People have noticed that the uh, the IR the the depth of the bezel yeah it's it's weird it's high and it creates that shadow it's, it's weird when you're reading. The well, it also collects a lot of kind of yeah. crud exactly. Um, so yeah, so if you're not using the touch, period. The seventy nine dollar one is awesome. Mm-hmm. That's the takeaway. There's some shit about it that they did that's weird. I'm not a huge fan of. But it is better than the th- than the 3G with the keyboard. 
I think it's it's not any better. It's not any worse than the touch. And when you're looking at it, the price difference, it's save the twenty bucks and and get the seventy nine dollar one, and uh, and be happy and and love the buttons. Learn to love the buttons. I, I think the buttons are the best way to interact with an ebook reader at this point. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna play the music. Let's answer a couple of questions. If you have questions for us, you can send them to podcast at tested.com. That's the email address. Keep them short. 45 seconds is preferred. Up to a minute, maybe. I kill them usually if they're longer than a minute. And uh, so so be concise. Listen to your question. Make sure you sound good. That's all I ask. Like, record just it listen to and then the, play just it. Just listen to yourself and before if, you send it. Yeah, if it doesn't sound like the podcast, it's probably not going to make the cut. That's all we're asking. So get a few thousand dollars worth of microphones and recording equipment. Set up a home studio. Get some egg crate on the walls. You also have to really like the sound of your voice. So we're going to take in questions. What prompted you to to do that little live AMA thing last night? Was that just a spur of the moment thing? Well, Jeff Jeff and Rory have been doing them, and we were getting requests. Uh, We also want to show off his room. What, my red room? Your red office. Yeah, you just painted it red, right? No, we painted it red when we moved in. Oh, was it? Yeah. For some reason, I never noticed. No one ever goes to that office. Yeah. Well, my desk is... The nice thing about doing it at my desk is you can't actually see the desk from the stream. My desk is really, really messy. Unbelievably well, messy. Well, if it's the, the one that you were running HBO Go from when we came over? Yeah. Yeah, it's a fucking nightmare. It's, it's horrible. Did people notice it's your corgi calendar? Yeah, I, people were asking. I don't know how you calendar. can work like that. That makes me, I don't that work makes there. me want to... That's the thing is I don't work there. I, I work I on my laptop. I even have that in my room. house. That would make me like... It makes me like want to itch my... Uh. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's gotten to the you point now... You a picture now, of your desk. I don't want to. It's gotten to the point now that like I don't... like. It's such a massive... Where do I put all that shit that I have to keep? I don't. I don't Spend know what to do with it. Spend an hour and just throw shit away. I could do that, but Put there's a box. Uh, it's like there's video cards. There's a couple of oh consoles on there. Yeah, I don't know how you. It's can, it's, oh. it's. I don't like. I said. I just. I better just, consoles, I not condoms, right? That's true. I've been thinking about doing a Reddit AMA, but I feel like that could. Oh, go. see, you're the only one uh, out of us who like could, could do it. Be, why? I could do it. I don't you think they let you do it. Why could Maybe I? you could probably do it. Why could they let me do it? They would let you. No, Logan do it. They need to verify. You gotta get approved. They let Logan do it because. You want to talk about PC gaming? Yeah, I, I like think they let easily, you do it. You can easily verify it. that it's you. What's the problem? Nah, I don't get it. People were requesting. You should do one. You should do one, Gary. Yeah, do uh, it. I kind of feel like it's more likely to go bad than good. Well, well, it's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, is it's, it? What yeah, do you have to do? Well, no, it's. I mean, it's, it's like it's like, like a whole day. How does it actually work? What do you? What? You say, I uh, well, AMA is funny because it's ask me anything or I am a right. So you can say I am a Hollywood screenwriter. Ask me anything, right? And that, or I am Gary Woodra. Ask, ask me, you know, writer of Book of Eli. Ask, and, and then people just start posting questions, and then you just respond. In, yeah, in just, like, just like in a regular thread. Yeah, yeah. It. it's just a normal Reddit. But you have to be verified first. It, it helps. Yeah. If, but, if, but, if, if but like someone, for you, since if you're, you're someone in the who people know yeah. the name, since your Twitter like, is guy, verified, guy who says, and you I post used to a link to it on Twitter, medieval times, he just goes and does it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those are the best. Those are. Or the guy was like, I am the extra in all these movies, and then you know. And then he yeah, I don't, think I, do. I don't think it would be that interesting. I don't know. I, I've thought about doing it. Um, you should do it. You, like, so you should right. say, I, I am Will Smith. Smith. I am Smith. Ask me yeah. anything. <laughs> and then I'll post a link to the Twitter. I mean, usually that's enough to verify is if you post the Reddit and then you link to it. From I went on there. There, there, was a, there was a thing on there the other day. Someone was talking about uh, somebody posted an Eli meme. Mm-hmm. And I went in there and said, I wrote the movie and I think this, I support this meme. I think, it's, I think it's, it, was in, it was on an atheist. What was the me- Eli meme? Well, it was it, it, so it was on an atheist subreddit, and somebody posted a picture. It was like knows the knows the entire Bible, but keeps it to himself. Yeah. And the point being, like you know, atheists don't like you know annoying Christians who come along and like have you heard the good news and all that can try and push their religion out of the road. That was part of the point the movie was making. Is I don't think that's. I mean, I don't. I I don't have a problem with people. Who I do that. I think religious faith is a good thing. I just don't like it when other people try to impress I, it upon others. There's a that was part. That was part. Yeah. Of, part of the point of the movie was that one character. Religion and politics. Off. No, no. Talk. This is this is uh, this is relevant. So the, the whole point was that he was a he was, he was a man he was a, a person who had spiritual faith but didn't bother anyone else with it which yeah. is, I think how you should he do was it. Trying to go along yeah. his way. Um, and the, so someone in the atheist subreddit picked up on that and I said I'm glad I, I I approve of this. That's part of the point the movie was trying to make. It was actually a really big massive Reddit. It was a huge thread because it's atheists and non-atheists yeah. arguing about religion. And so I was very pleased to see that's one of the things that the movie was intended to do is get people talking when about Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web. I'm sure that he thought, you know, one day people are going to use this to argue about religion and politics well, and the movies. Same, the that's same, probably yes. the, the, one of the better things that have come out of the internet 
and also horrific pornography. Did you hey, see- you know the triple X domains are live today. I thought did about you, buying WillSmith.xsx, but it was already gone. <laughs> did you see the Did you see the thing the other day? I think I actually just saw it this morning. Uh, that was somebody posted a screen capture. Like, if you let a nine year old use your computer for a couple of hours, this is what your Google search history will look like oh, afterwards. No. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was I, like Ben Ten and a couple <laughs> of other kid shows, and everything else was like naked ladies, boobies, lady yeah. parts. Yeah. Well, what's a, what's a nine year old who's only been exposed to filtered internet sees unfiltered internet for the first time? No parental controls. It's like when people came off AOL. Hey, and they that's like, why you gotta learn to clear the cache. Fuck me, man. There's porn. No, See, kids. Private kids oh, well, these kids private private mode, imagine blinking into the daylight of the unfiltered, non parental controlled <laughs> internet. Oh. It's it's wonderful, like. Like the terms he used, though, right? It's like lady boobies, parts, lady boobie, parts, boobies. I'm yeah. curious. It's kind of kind of cute. It it's is precious. Yes, it is. Um, um, so anyway, so I went on there and initial and, and immediately, of course, what happens is people are saying, "How do we know you're really who you say you are?" Which, so you posted you know, a link to it on Twitter. No, I didn't. Oh. I, so I think someone went off and googled it, and someone said, "Oh, like, I can see that you're pretty active on the internet." Like they just believed it was me. If if you if I I could have gone on my Twitter, which is verified, and said. Yes, that's me on Reddit. Oh, is, is your that- Twitter verified? I didn't know. Yes, it is. How's yours doing? <laughs> it's fine. Verified? No. Oh, that's a shame. I don't. I don't. I think being Still verified to hit 10, would, would cause problems. For I me. think it would actually make your problem worse. Yeah, my problem has gotten really bad. Because people would assume lately. that if you're verified, you have to be the Will Smith, yep. not just. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'd have three hundred thousand followers who are really upset. Uh, but they wouldn't unfollow. <laughs> no, no. They, that's the thing is, occasionally, like when the when the when the other Will Smith noise gets too high, I usually post a thing that says, "Hey, public service announcement: I'm not that guy." Yeah. Well, you know, how and then I lose of, like 300 followers. You know how a lot of celebrities, either because they couldn't get their real name or whatever, they want to make a point. It's like the yeah, the Kevin the, Smith, that the Kevin, Kevin Smith. Smith, or the real blah yeah. blah blah. You could be not the real or not the. Well, my Smith. my my normal my default if Will Smith isn't available is that not that Will Smith, right? Which I thought was quite clever. When yes, I so that should be your Twitter ago. name. No, not, why would you give up at Will Smith? I'm not going to give up at Will Smith. Yeah, it's like an office space. Fuck Michael Bolton. The <laughs> yeah, other guy yeah. should change his yeah, name. Yeah, just because that No Talent Ascon started winning Grammys. I don't think Will Smith is a No Talent Ascon, just to be clear. I, I, I he, a, he has won Grammys. Though. I have a deep respect for Will Smith. Hey, he's he has he has EGOT potential. He's won good Broadway. No show. way. Well, he also needs to TV. He doesn't have an Oscar, and he doesn't have... He I think no he Emmy, probably got right? Emmys I for... He, I don't think he won an Emmy for the Fresh, for Fresh Prince. Prince. I don't, I don't know. I think so. But yeah, you know, but he's been nominated for an Oscar. He would have to do. He could do a guest star. I'm pretty role. sure he has Grammys, so he would have to yeah, do a theater. He would have to do a theater role. He got uh, best new artist. He got to go win. back to TV. Huh? Although he, he, he produ- win. Although he produces a lot of TV, yeah. so he oh, could win yeah. an Emmy for production. That. Yeah. he actually yeah. is an EGOT threat. He's an EGOT contender. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right up there with Whoopi Goldberg and, and Tracy Morgan. Mm-hmm. Tracy Jordan. 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 Who who else is actual EGOT? Who has I don't, like, are there any real egots? Uh, like Christian Chenoweth probably has egot potential. Yeah, like Nathan Lane and uh, those kind of people right, have probably yeah. got them. Should we answer some questions? You got to be active in the theater because the T <laughs> yeah. is that's the elusive Pokemon. No, that's what that's what but happens the T is in. The T is a much like smaller. Yeah, it's a much smaller pool of contenders like, though. P- Picard or Jean, uh, Patrick Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you're an A-list, if you're an A-list, you mean Magneto? Yeah. I mean like Professor Dan- X, like Denzel. Wheels. He's Magneto and like, If you're an A-list actor, it's very easy to decide to go tread the boards for a bit. Like yeah, Denzel just did some theater last year and was, you know, a yeah. highly praised yeah. role. Will Smith um, could go be Spider-Man if, we, if he wants. If Will Smith decides that he wants to be in Death of a Salesman next year, it's gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it's not difficult for big stars like that to if they if they wanted to go do theater. I think I think it's time for a reverse. Look who's coming to dinner. And you know what? Even if it's G might be the second hardest, I think all you gotta do is Ashton release an album. It. Really? Yeah. It's really, called, called, uh, and it's soundtrack. not Look Who's It's Guess Who's Coming guess to Dinner. Yeah, the movie that. was actually called Guess Who. Yeah. Oh, Bernie okay. Mac Bernie was Mac. the dad. Yeah. They did oh. it already. Yeah. Wow. Oh. But it goes to that show what finally home. You have, you have producer I'm, instincts. I'm right there. I'm you, ready to go. You could be out there making Ashton Kutcher I'm gonna, movies. I'm going to go ahead and tell you Cinderella plus Die Hard. Think about that. All right. I'll think about it. Yeah. I'll think about it. Um, I'm going to play a question now. I this think. is a good podcast this week. Yeah, we're, we are so all over the... Recording it's the on holidays! Tuesdays. Fuck it, it's Christmas. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> recording on Tuesdays has thrown our whole natural rhythm out of whack. Have you seen that Christmas store? Or the Christmas tree store? It's on... Uh, it's, what? We can walk by is it. Is it all fake, fake Christmas trees? All fake Christmas trees. Completely decked out. It's right next to the... It's right under the gym. I don't believe in fake and Christmas trees. I have a fake Christmas tree and I fucking hate fake Christmas trees. I actually kind of do. It's I got... Worse. I got When I was a kid, we had a we had a, um, we had had a a fake Christmas tree that we used every year. It came in three parts and we kept it in 
like the little cupboard under the stairs. And the Harry Potter cupboard. You have to fold yeah, it but, out, right? It yeah. folds, it, no, you didn't fold no, out. No, it was, no. it, it went together so like a... I know, but the, the branches are yes, stiff. Yes, they would you, come you, out. You come out to fold yeah. them in and then... And you know what? I, I have many, many, many fond child, childhood memories of that, that Christmas tree. Well, just, you, just as your yeah. memories of Christmas trees are evil, plague you. Horrible. They, haunt me. They're good for me. Um, but I, and I came, when I first came to America, I was like, oh, let's, get, let's just get one of those plastic trees, use it every year. And everyone was like, what? No, here it's much more important you have a real tree. The Chris, well, the thing about real trees is our house is too small for a real tree. You could get a little one. So the little ones, I, I have a moral problem with paying 50 bucks for a four foot tree. Not just a moral, you're just cheap. <laughs> Being cheap is a moral choice. You could teach people how to take care of your tree. You got to put it in your know, water and Look at this. I would think that you, someone who's all, all about like organic, you know, real coffee and real food and yeah. real this, that I think you'd be about a real tree. I have been, always been about real trees until we moved into this house. Uh, and literally, are you sure there isn't some residual childhood trauma that won't let you <laughs> go back to a Christmas tree no, farm? No, it just prevents me from enjoying Christmas. Okay. Feeling, just in general. Feeling any joy in right. life around right. the holidays. That's why the cutting happens. Hence uh, the cutting, yeah. yeah. Hey, so we watched two things Christmassy. Well, are we well, going to pick that no, now? No, no, no. Let's play some questions. We haven't even... Uh, no, we haven't, played, we haven't played this, this first podcast question. podcast is all over the fucking oh, no. place. I'm going to just pick a question at random here. I don't know which one this is because I didn't uh, label them. This today. podcast is like Skyrim. It's like a sandbox part. You can just go anywhere at There's any time. There's just a set of but rules. We're not even 40 doing, hours in. We're not even doing the story <laughs> missions. <laughs> we're not even doing the main quest. We're just doing endless side but quests. But like in the PS3, yeah, 40 hours nowhere. in, it starts crashing. <laughs> so Pretty much. You can't go yeah, 40 hours. This one's called Kindle Question. I'm going to play it. Greetings, testers. This is John, a.k.a. Robotic Cheese. Currently from Blacksburg, Virginia, Ooh. but originally from Boston Botech. suburb Wayland, Massachusetts. Hometown trivia. In its history, the Wayland High School Fieldhouse has hosted a single rock concert. That to a 1973 pre-fame Aerosmith. My question concerns the current red-headed stepchild of the Kindle family, the DX, which went noticeably unmentioned during Amazon's recent round of releases and renames. Though still for sale, it's no longer even listed as a part of the Kindle lineup. The DX is obviously near death, but what odds do you see of a refresh, perhaps with a touchscreen, versus Amazon retiring it altogether? Is there a price point the large e-ink screens could hit to make them viable in an iPad world, or are we destined to be ruled by LCDs and promises of Pixel Chi and Mirasol vaporware? As an e-ink user who finds the large screen indispensable for reading on the treadmill, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Thanks a lot, and always be testing. This is a, a timely question because I saw the first Kindle DX I've ever seen in the wild the other day. You, you, you I see saw it the on uh, all four of them, right? I, yeah, I, I was on a train you got with four different Kindle. Well, no, it was no. There was an original one. Oh, sorry, there was a second. I think it was a second generation one because it didn't have the little silver stripe. Okay, so it was the big chunky white one. Maybe that was. That Maybe was it was a first one. generation one. Big chunky so one I saw a first, first a third, a fourth, and a DX all on the same Bart car, which was I, – I just wanted to do a little jog around the, the car, but I didn't want to get arrested, so I didn't do that. Um, th th I don't think the DX is going anywhere. I think it's just going to stay as it is. My hunch is that that screen's too big for the IR touchscreen to work. Yes, that's what I think too. Uh, although you need pretty big bezel. Well, HP bezels. HP has done like twenty-four inch touch smarts with the similar technology, but they're much heftier bezels, much brighter lights, and and there's some downsides to that. Uh, I think the DX still does well in like education and uh, and some corporate stuff, but it, I think it's just too big. It's for older people. I I don't even know if it's for older people. I think it's for textbooks. If you think about how a textbook is going to scale on a little e-ink screen, it's not good. I don't like textbooks on e-ink screens. Why not? Too many pages, and you need a lot of reference stuff. It, mm. It's not not fast enough. Maybe, maybe I, I don't know. Uh, I don't think e-ink e-ink e -ink is great for reading linearly. Yes, you reading don't read novels and biographies linearly. and stuff like that. Textbooks That's true. can jump around. But you chapters. can search. Being able to search textbooks is a is a. You, you need pop-up menus and like. You want an iPad. Good, yeah, you want a screen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll see you for that stuff. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think as long as they continue to sell, they're going to keep making them. I don't think they're going to refresh it, and I don't. I wouldn't expect to see touch. But I mean, I, I don't. That's a speculation, not based in any kind of fact. Uh, I'm going to play another question. Hi, Will, Norm, and Gary. Hometown trivia. Uh, I live in Trauer in Denmark, and uh, in uh, World War II, the harbor, uh, the harbor was used to get Jews from Denmark to Sweden. Okay. Um, well, my question is. What hybrid camera should I pick? Uh, I want to shoot great video and have all those features like uh, time lapse, um, but I still want wanted to to be good at taking pictures. Um, 
So uh, what should I pick? Uh, thank you and always be testing. I assume he's talking about a DSLR, right? Yeah. Wait, I missed the first part hybrid. of the question. I mean, he wanted a camera that's a hybrid that shoots video and photos. Oh, he wants okay. people to take great photos right. and also shoot video. And time, do time lapse. No, is that really like a that. Fe- that sounds like a pretty high-end feature. Yeah, well, you time- can do that in DSLRs. Oh, really? Uh, I don't think you can do time lapse DSLRs. Yeah, you just shoot a frame every three I, seconds I don't know. or whatever. I, I haven't messed around with that. Not in mm. DSLRs I've used. Um, this seems like a DP review question. Yes. Did he, did he list a budget or anything? He didn't list a budget oh, or any of that stuff. Need more data. Yeah. yeah. I, bl- I ran that question because I like the hometown trivia. Okay. Actually, I thought it was cool. Finished. Or video. again, you know, if you want, if you're low end, that that NEX is pretty, is pretty. Interesting. Uh, video's so not. It's, it's not, not real good end. for video. Oh, okay. And it's also six hundred dollars, which is not low yeah. end. You know, to well, no, but compared to DSLR, it is. I mean, you can get a you can get a you decent DSLR, DSLR for six hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah, yeah, eight hundred bucks. Um. Yeah. So the way you do uh, time lapses with DSLR is with a thing that goes in between. That fires the, the shutter every X seconds, and then you stitch them together with a piece of software. Yes. Uh, that'll do it for questions this week. I'm not going to run any more. We're running a little late, and I think we have a lot of stuff to talk about in outtakes. So for Gary Witt and Norman Chan, thank you guys for coming by, as always. It's al- always a pleasure. Uh, we're live every Thursday, except for this one. Except for this one. Uh, this has been This Is Only a Test. We'll be back next week with more podcasts. Until the next time, I'm Will. This next one's going to be the last one of the year? Probably is, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll probably do two next week, right? I don't know. We did, Let's look at the calendar because next, next you're gone on I the won't 19th. Be here. I, the, I don't return until the 29th. Oh my there's god! Actually, no one's back. There's actually a very good I'm chance I will not be here next week. Okay, we'll see. Okay, the taking December off didn't work out so well. Huh? It, it completely backfired. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, so we we we'll, we might do a double next week and then do a late one between Christmas and New Year's. There definitely will be one before CES. Is when's the 29th? Is that uh, that is Thursday right after Christmas? But that week, I think the office is empty. Yeah, so much. I might. I mean, if you guys are around your game, then we might sneak in or Skype it or something. Like I might come in and set up in here and Skype you guys in if you want to do it. Yep. Uh, but we'll be back soon. We'll be back next week for sure. Until next time, uh, this has been. This is only a test. Uh, come back next week for the live show. Uh, what song should I play? Hi there, I didn't see you. Test it. Look, that pig has wheels. Oh, no, 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 no. Test it. I think I've heard that one before. Uh, that's, I, that's I, I, I like pig tank game that... Wasn't very good. Yeah, I like to keep rares. I keep some rare, uh, you know, some rare outtake music. Should produce more of those. Songs. I know. I'll have to get the file from Anna, and I'll just jam some out. Uh, so let's see. What were we going to talk about? Uh, movies, weren't we? What were we talking about? I don't know. I said save it for fake outtakes, assuming that someone would remember. Oh, didn't we talk about uh, a political podcast? Uh, yeah, but I think we need to. That, that's an off-camera conversation. Oh, I thought you said save it for fake outtakes. In fact, I'm pretty sure you did. Never mind. Yeah, but I, no, I'm I'll do it. What we need is the thing is though to give it some balance. We need a we need a, a we need fiery right wing voice. Mm, do yeah. we, is there anyone in the office? We that need has a Hannity to your Combs. conservative. <laughs> no, we don't want to be Combs. He's so meek. Yeah, we want the opposite, where the left wing guy is in charge and the right wing guy is. A so stooge, you want to be Tucker as Carlson? To how it usually is. Wait, no, Tucker no. Carlson's the bow tie wearing Republican. I don't remember. Uh, I want to be Al Sharpton. You what you want to be? No, what you really want to be. Is uh, is uh, what's his name from the Daily Show, John Stewart? You want John Stewart and Colbert to face off against each other every night, and you want to be John Stewart, uh, I guess. Or maybe you should maybe you should just be. Oh, I want to be Bill Maher. Okay, How about yes. that because I get to say fuck. Yeah, that's true. That's an important part of your shtick. Uh, so yeah, what are you, what are you guys doing for the holidays? Oh, we were gonna talk about Christmas movies. That's what we we're gonna do. Oh, by the way, since. <gasps> um, Christmas no, movies? no, I was gonna, I was gonna talk about something else, but it takes us into science territory, and that's why I don't really. Well, that's go fine. There. We can talk about yeah, that. No, no, no. Yeah. Let's do it another time. Do you want to plug your thing that you that's named now and stuff? It doesn't have a name. Oh, it, it doesn't. It doesn't that well, was a rumor. It's, it's it's one thing. You know, every every site that reports on it calls it something else. So okay, so we'll, uh, even so we, I'm confused at this point. Okay, and you named it, or at least a first draft, early draft, uh, a draft. I honestly don't even okay. remember. Yeah. We but no, it's there. good. They're casting it. They're gonna. They're it's gonna, gonna happen. They're gonna start shooting in February. Yeah, it's very exciting. Awesome. I have another movie. It's gonna come out in summer 2013. So that's, that's fantastic. Have a, a, mm-hmm. a summer movie to look forward. There's to. There's some delayed gratification there. When did, Eli came out on MLK weekend, right? Yeah. He did okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Have you ever What's seen that? this? No. It is a Jim Henson produced 
Christmas documentary, Christmas movie, not a, doc, not, a, not a documentary, about otter puppets. It's on Netflix. It's pretty magical. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, they have a whole Christmas. Otter puppets? Like, there's a whole bunch of otter puppets. I'll See, be watching those really bad Casey, Hallmark uh, Casey uh, Christmas oh. movies. No, no, no. They're so bad. We're doing alternative Christmas movies at my house, and we've yeah, watched like two what? of them. We're doing bad, we did Bad Santa. I hate that. Oh, I like what? Bad Santa. It's Don't hilarious. Like it. uh, and then we did uh, Lethal Weapon. You, you well, know, Lethal, Gremlins. Lethal Weapon is on my is on my list of Christmas. I always watch uh, Lethal Weapon. I always watch Die Hard. Die Hard. You end with Die Hard. And I always watch. Uh, no, I always I always end with my personal favorite, which is Christmas Vacation. Oh, okay. Which is the best. Uh, I I I was listening to Smodcast and they were talking about Gremlins as a Christmas it movie, is. which I had completely it forgotten. Yes. It is. You know what else has become a Christmas classic that I've got on the on the DVR and I'm going to be watching hopefully this week is Scrooge. I love Scrooge. It was well, actually, on actually TV. Actually, one of the better versions it. of a Christmas Carol. I think. Oh yeah. It, yeah, it was on it's, TV it's uh, like last week. Yeah, it's been running yeah. all week, so I recorded yeah. it. I'm going to catch it. It's uh, Karen Allen. Karen Allen, that's right. Karen from Allen's there, yeah. and, uh, and, of course, Bill Murray mm-hmm. and uh, many great actors. Uh, so I watched last night with Gina this movie called Santa Claus. Not the Santa Claus. Not Santa Claus the movie. Santa Claus... <laughs> It, the title was not Santa Claus. Did the it movie. have Dudley not, Moore in it? Yes, it has okay, Dudley okay. Moore and John Lithgow. So that's what I'm talking about. It, John Lithgow was wearing the one percent costume. He was wearing like the rich old guy costume huh. while he was going to Senate hearings about his shoddy toy manufacturer. Like they were. Oh, it's, yeah. It's such a fantastic movie because it's about the yes, evils of the toy industry. another anti-corporate message from liberal Hollywood. Yeah. John, at one point, the Senate, the Senate guy opens up a stuffed animal that is filled with broken glass and nails <laughs> oh God, and really? razor yeah, blades. True. He, wa- he wants to keep <laughs> selling cheap Hold on. toys to kids but so he can make money. But it gets better because he's wearing an ermine, ermine coat, like a fancy yep. old white guy, leather, uh, a fur coat, yeah. chewing a stogie. Oh, he's the ultimate bad with guy. With slicked back hair. Oh, yes. and, and he's laughing at the kid's misery maniacal and suffering. Laugh. Did, you see, did, you so see, good. did you see the Fox News thing that said the Muppet? Are part yeah. of the liberal conspiracy. Anti capitalism. Yeah. Chris Te- Cooper just Tex wants- Richmond, the evil oil yeah. baron, represents the 1%, and, we, and kids are being brought up to not believe in those guys. I, we I, should I, believe in evil oil magnates who want to destroy uh, classic uh, theaters. Well, they and, always. And kill the, the Muppets are always anti anti development. They're pro fun. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're, they're, no, they're pro, pro silly. Pro childlike wonder. You never yeah. saw Santa Claus, the movie? No, I'd never seen it before. Wow. It was really bad. Yeah. Dudley Moore's the only. Like, the, he was the Damn, guy. John Lithgow. Well, but the, the guy that played Santa Claus wasn't famous. David so Huddleston. D- Dudley Moore is the guy who has his name above the marquee. It's like Dudley Moore. Is Burgess Santa Meredith Claus. is in it. Uh, that's right. He plays an elf, right? Yeah, he plays an elf. Uh, David Huddleston. Uh, not, a, not a great movie. David Huddleston is in Lebowski, dude. The guy who plays Santa Claus is in Lebowski. But I don't know what he plays. He's in, he in Gilmore Girls. He's in West Wing. He was in... Oh, he... Well, I think he plays... David Huddleston he, plays, he, he plays the, big plays Lebowski. the big Lebowski. Yes. Yeah. He plays the title role. I've seen Spinals before, dude. This guy's faking. This guy fucking walks. <laughs> right. No, no, man. <laughs> I'm not fake. Okay, anyway. Yeah, so that movie was really bad. It there, was there's real bad. There's a lot bad. of bad Christmas movies, but there are a bunch of good ones as well. You've got to watch uh, Scrooge. You've got to watch the Christmas Grinch. Vacation. The Grinch holds up real well. Not a big Wait, f- what? Not the Jim Carrey version. No. no, fuck that. The original, the one with uh, uh, okay. the, the cartoon. The one with uh, what's his name? Uh, Be- uh, not Bella Lugosi. Who si- who sings? Who does the voice of the Grinch? Uh, the, the narration. Who's the? It was who's Bella the Lugosi, voice? wasn't it? No, Bella Lugosi does the voice of the Grinch. Who just sings uh, the song? You're a mean one. I can't remember. It's uh, it's it's not Harry Belafonte. It's uh, I it's don't remember. One of the great baritones, basses. No, of our I'm not time. a big fan of that or Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer or any of those kind of. Uh, I like the, one with the stop motion animation stuff. Yeah, the stop motion. Well, stuff. that's Rudolph and Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman's stuff. pretty good. Actually, none of those movies. Really I'm not a up. huge fan of a Christmas story, actually, but I think it's because I didn't grow up with it the way Americans. Did. I've, ne- I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Why they play it 24 hours every year? That's why I've never seen it. Maybe you should catch it sometime. Maybe. I don't know. I, I feel like I have the gist. There's a BB the kid gun. In it, actually, Ralphie almost reminds me of like a little junior Will. Oh, fuck off. Maybe that's why I never watched it. <laughs> Christmas Vacation is high on my list. He Christmas kind of Vacation is shooting yourself a class. And it, it has aged very well. Much more oh, than I those mean, other and vacation I, and they're actually, movies. They're actually now, they do a 24-hour marathon of that now. I think it's, it's, it's becoming enshrined mm. as a whole oh, yeah. classic. I mean, it, it's funny because it's going to end up being the Chevy Chase movie that, that survives. Like, if you look, Caddyshack hasn't aged particularly well. It's still very funny. I still like it. But yeah. you show a 12-year-old Caddyshack today, they're not going to be amused. Right. right. Right? Same thing for Funny Farm and, and Fle- Fletch, maybe. Fletch is Fletch is clever. always going to be around. Um, but Christmas Vacation is the vacation movie now. Yeah, you know, I really, it I really is. Like, it is. It, it's also uh, Cousin Eddie's finest appearance. 
Uh, he's actually very good in Vegas Vacation, which is an underrated entry in that franchise, I will I, say. Yeah, I didn't. I, the one time I watched Wallace that, I was Shawn not impressed. Wallace Shawn as the unbeatable blackjack dealer. <laughs> that was good. Wallace Shawn is the guy who plays the, uh, what's his name from Princess Bride, yes. right? Yes. yes, he is. Yeah, I watched Princess he's Bride He's also the Grand Negus in DS9. Really? Yep. Well, I did didn't there multiple that. actors play that character? Possibly. Is the Grand Negus a... Uh, he's a uh, Frankie. Do you think okay. they have Christmas in Star Trek? They never did a Christmas episode. No, okay. they're all atheists. I'd like... I don't. That's the thing. As much as I like, like no, they must have done. If a you Christmas said to me, never done a live Christmas in a world, but we'll transport you right now to the 24th century, and it's Star Trek. You can have holodecks, warp replicators, speed, teleporters, right. replicators, everything you want. But there's no Christmas. I think I would. I don't know, dude. I mean, <laughs> here you go. Although I could just live in the holodeck exactly, yeah. and just have it be Christmas. Here, yeah. Here's the thing. People would just make fun of you all the time. There's no like, oh, oh, so for silly, one, for one silly week at the 21st December, century. Say, I'm going for my vacation. I'll be in the holodeck. It's a staycation in the holodeck, but it's going to be Christmas. I'm going to have a Victorian Dickensian Christmas. You can have a real Christmas. Yeah. You can visit Santa Claus. Once, so one, yeah, I go to the North Pole. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing. Once you go to once you go to uh, once you have the holodeck, basically. Once you have yeah, the, well, once you have off. replicators, why w- w- Christmas just becomes a matter of punching in the code and getting wrapping tea, Earl Grey hot plus yes. wrapping paper. Um, Alexis with a big bow on it. Yeah. Oh God! Don't even start that. <laughs> those are those are the worst. They well, are. no, you read the something awful post about it. I yeah. didn't read the something. No, I watched yeah. Gary's R- vitriol Ryan about Davis it. and I had yeah. quite a long discussion. Yeah, I was I was night. watching that while yes. I was doing the live chat. Um, I, I stayed out of that conversation, probably for the best. Yeah. I uh, do you think that that religion can survive post contact with other human beings? Yes, religion. Other, reli- religion is other, religion. Other, it, uh, yeah, mean, aliens, space look, aliens. Religion has survived everything else that's been thrown at it. And yet it continues. When aliens show up, people the people who are religious will just say, yes, well, God made them too. We just didn't know about it until now. 6,000 years ago. Yeah. Okay. In six days. Um, th- did you see the thing about Kepler 33? Is that it? What's yeah, the Earth like the, the, Earth-like mirror, the, the mirror Earth. Two. Earth. Yeah. It's Earth. Well, it's not mirror Earth because it's well, a different it's another, solar system. It's another planet which li- which exists in that Goldilocks zone. Yes. Ooh. So you, you, class 70, M. Hold on. Do you know it's the Gold- It is class you, M. You know the Goldilocks zone. It's the it's the distance from a star in which the planet can support. Yes, that's yeah. why I said uh, the well, size no, of the I'm planet. explaining it for the people at home. Uh, the size of the planet so we, relative to the size of the star, too. The size of the planet relative to the size and intensity of the star. It's the Goldilocks zone because it's not too hot or too cold. Liquid water. It's just right. 74 degrees on the surface. Although they're saying it's, probably, it's a little big, they're saying it's probably too big. It could be where the super strong people live. Uh, yes, yeah, and it's also six hundred oh, yeah. light years away. So no matter what, we're not getting there anytime soon. Mm. Well, you know, somebody could maybe the large, maybe the Higgs boson is the key to faster than light travel. Did Voyager just leave our like the what? solar system? Huh? Uh, Voyager, one of the one of the satellites moving out. Oh, uh, yeah, miles a second. Voyager. Well, the thing is that that edge of the solar system is kind of a sliding mark because at first they thought the edge of the solar system was beyond the orbit of Pluto, and then they were talking about it being where the solar wind yeah. is is no longer detectable because of the galactic wind or whatever. Eleven is. miles a second. Yeah, it's, it's really fast. fast. Yeah, that stuff's still out there. It's going out there, and, and eventually the Klingons will shoot it down. The beginning of but again, uh, though, in the in the grand scheme of things, eleven miles a second is oh, not yeah, getting you nothing. anywhere. No. no. It's a, it's a no. uh, walk to the chemist. Let's not forget the speed space. of light is 186,000 miles a second, and yeah. you have to travel one year at that speed to go one light year. Yeah, so yeah. the nearest star is four years at as fast as things can go, as far as we're aware, yep. mm. away. That I tried w- reading the Wikipedia page yesterday about the gram, Graham's number. What's Graham's number? The biggest number that we can calculate. Okay. Why? And How my is that? head hurts so much. Wow, really? I'm going to go so check this out. So much. Just trying to... Incomprehensible that number. I checked out the Wikipedia entry on hot dogs the other day. That was fascinating because I, I was trying to see if the Wikipedia considered hot dogs a sandwich. I read it about is. the uh, no, the, they don't. It is a sandwich. Well, it's bre- meat with buns. I read about the Googleplex when I was a, a kid, and that still blows my mind. What's no, the Googleplex? The so number. Google, uh, it's spelled G O O G O L, yep. is one with I believe what a hundred zeros after it. Something like that. Yeah, it's yeah. one with a hundred zeros after it. And, uh, a Google, and a Googleplex, which I believe is the biggest number that has a name, is a Google raised to the power of a Google. That's a lot of that's a lot of zeros. Graham's number is bigger, and yet for some reason they know the last five hundred digits. But they can't figure out the intervening digits. They, they know the last five hundred digits, like to the ones digit, which blows my mind that you can mathematically calculate that. And that's but the then why don't but then why can't you just add one on? Because you can't calculate like they this number exists because you can calculate it. Okay. So can it change? Like, if we can theoretically calculate that plus one, it, 
Does Graham's number go up one? I don't think that works that way hmm. because of how how that number is, is this, calculated. Was in the this first named place. after some dude named Graham, or is it so. just whoever yeah. named it like crackers? Yeah. yeah, I made s'mores on the fireplace. Oh, I love s'mores. Let's not talk about food. I, I want s'mores. Can we make s'mores? Oh, I love s'mores. You, when it's cold, okay. And we have a fire burning. It's, you guys should come over. It's totally cold now. Now here's the thing. S'mores in the fireplace. I know that s'mores are traditionally made with Hershey's. They've kind of they kind of own that. But if you Bullshit. want a good s'more, make it with good chocolate. Yeah. Don't use Hershey's. Hershey's is shit. I so like I got uh, Dagobah bars. Those are all right. They're okay. But they, I, I wanted. I was looking for the right cocoa qual- so it would melt right because yeah. that's the goal, yeah. right? Yeah. And I got fancy vanilla marshmallows from Whole Foods, like the big square oh, ones. Wow. That's, nice. that's nice. And I put them on these kebabs. And Gina and I, like a couple of assholes, were standing in front of the fireplace over and the coals. And what kind of graham crackers do you use? Uh, I got these thick ones from Whole Foods. I think I'm going to get the Honey Maids. See, I like Because you I, want a little bit of a crisp. I like that. I like that. And what the chocolate I would use, I would get. I would go to a British shop and get proper Cadbury's dairy milk. Not this shit that they make But you can't use milk, here. though, because it doesn't milk right. It doesn't melt right. But Hershey's is milk chocolate. No, Hershey's Hershey's is milk. It's The reason Hershey's works is it's not that milky for milk uh, chocolate. Otherwise, it will melt. Yeah, you want it to melt right because milk chocolate uh, melts different. Well, I would love to. You know what I'd love to make is a white chocolate s'more. I wonder if that's doable. That, that would work. I think it would be way too fat. I think it would be way too sweet. Yeah. Yeah, you want it a little bitter. Um... Yeah, but the s'mores, like these, these with that the with so the fucking good right now with the dark Dagobah. Basically, like we had to chop up the chocolate a little bit so it would melt into the marshmallow because like the bar itself was too much. But it was uh, it was real good. It's but like, you only ate one. It's like, it's like grilled you eat cheese one of, your, of sweets, pretty much. Yeah, you only need one. One was more than enough. Yeah, I mean it's the size of a fucking. Do you now? Do you top and bottom the graham cracker? Of course. Okay. Yeah. You sandwich it. You make you a sandwich, sandwich out. Yeah. yeah, mush it out. Yeah. And get the marshmallow it's to not, blow out of the side of the thing. Oh, I really want s'mores now. It was really. It good. It is hard though. You got You got You got to take the s'more out at exactly the right moment. Yeah. It's just melty enough. Otherwise, it starts to drip. But, and but fall you have apart. to have the crust on the marshmallow. Yes. Or else it needs to be. It needs to be not brown. Why is that not a dessert you can get in a restaurant? There are restaurants that sell s'mores. Oh yeah. But you think about it; it has a very short time. You like, there's no; it has to come right off of the fire and then go into your mouth. Well, no. I, here's what I would do: do it like a flambe. The guy they prepare it tableside. Ooh, Ooh like bananas Foster. Yes, just like banana, banana or, or baked Alaska. Yeah. Or one of those things that they, they come yeah. like the flame kind of. I like off. that. Yeah, I like I like dessert that has danger involved. That would be thrilling. You can be he makes it's the s'more show right there. and you gotta. Well, you could do yeah. you, like you, you could almost have like dude. a s'more station that comes out, and they put a little fire in the middle of your table, and you yes. just cook them yourself. Yes, like Korean barbecue, but yeah. with desserts. Let's start that business. <laughs> Turkey Thanksgiving all year round. S'mores Let's get, and dessert. Get Jonathan Kaplan on the phone right now. Who's Jonathan Kaplan? The guy. The, oh, the melt guy. Yes. Yeah. Who's I think Jonathan he's, Kaplan. What he's do you busy do for a living again? Right now. I, I, yeah. Not grilled cheese. Flip oh. cameras, baby. Sonic has a whole range of Texas toast. Sonic yeah, is bad food. Texas food. toast. It's yes. like this massive. Thick. It looks I like, fantastic. I like Texas toast. This is gonna I be love Texas toast. Good I, butter, garlic. Oh, I apologize oh, in so advance. Have you noticed how the fake outtakes always turn into food as we get <laughs> well, to started with food hungry, today, waiting for and we're lunch. Ending with food. Have you have you ever eaten at a Sonic? Yes, I have not. I have never eaten at a Sonic that I didn't end that meal with explosive diarrhea. The only thing I uh, I went to a Sonic back east where they had the thing to drive the drive yeah. through where the where they the waitress order from comes. the thing. No, she comes out. Ooh, the rollerblades? No, uh, no, I think she was four wheel like, skates, dude, not rollerblades. Roller skates? Yes. Yeah. Uh, see, the Sonic that we had in my, in my town, like you pulled into the little space and there was an intercom and you talked to him and then the woman oh, no, would come that's, out with no, the Oh, no, you're right. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. And they bring it out. Yeah. yeah. It was like going through a gas station or something. Well, except it was not a drive through Yeah, it was weird. But the food, the, I don't know something about that sets, does bad things to me. I'm not a huge mm-hmm. fan of Sonic. I Yeah, I don't think the food's very good. I just like the, uh, I, those French toast, uh, the Texas toast sandwiches looked really good. Texas yeah. toast grilled cheese. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like Texas toast in I general. It's easy to make. Do it in your oven. Oh, yeah. You need some butter and it's bread. Big bread. Big piece of bread. You just got to slice that bread real thick, like yep. at least an inch thick. Yep. Okay. I guess that'll do it for us today. Anything else we want to cover before we uh, sign off here? Uncharted 2. I uh, borrowed your copy. How's and it going? Wes is playing it. I'm watching it. It's a perfect game it's, to watch. It's, it's great to watch. Yeah, I told you. It's almost as much fun yeah. to watch because it's so cinematic. So, so awesome. many great set pieces. Is, it, oh, is he playing on easy or hard? Uh, normal difficulty. Okay. I think Uncharted 3 actually tops it in, ca- in, in terms just, of the crazy set pieces. I just don't like those difficulty spikes. I have no, no time for that kind of bullshit. If I'm playing, if I'm playing an easy game, I want it to be easy. Play it on very easy, and you know, just coast through it. Mm. Uh, So, technically, in case I'm not back next week, uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. But I'm hopefully we'll do one before the year's out. I mean, maybe we could maybe come in and do a Saturday or evening time one for the Euros. Yeah, because we could do like New Year's resolutions and stuff. Yeah, I mean, we should do another pre-holiday. Like, if you want, we'll work around your schedule. If you want to do one Christmas week, like between Christmas and New Year, I'm gone. But if you guys Uh, are back on Thursday, yeah, we can do that. We could. Well, I come back. We'd have to do it on Friday. 
Because I okay. come back really late on Thursday. I can do one the week that like Christmas week. What is it like the nineteenth? Whenever okay. that week starts. Well, worst that's case, you guys can come week. in here and Skype Will's me in gone. Tennessee. I'll take a microphone with me so right. I can do that. And and uh, uh, it's never the same though. Well, I mean, or we can do it on the Friday and we'd just be a day late, which is fine too. All right, well, let's see how it goes. Yeah, um, but uh, the other thing is, alternately, we also said we would do some evening ones uh, live for the Euros and Australians. Oh, what difference so, does it make? Well, they have different time zones. I know, but it's all the same. But they don't get to see. They don't get to enjoy us live. What Wh- how Wes, just let me know that I got a uh, package from Clout in the mail. Ooh, I think it's Windows Phone. It's a Windows Phone. <laughs> yeah. Is it a Lumia? Because if it's not, I don't care. <laughs> it might be a Focus S. I, I don't think it's even a Focus S. I yeah. think it's just a Focus. Running out the old Focus S. Okay. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll be back uh, next Thursday. Until then, uh, you know, always be testing. All righty. Bye, chat people. We will see you guys next week as well. Thank you for coming at an unusual date and time. Killing chat now. Or killing video now.